What made you quit a job on the spot? I worked for T-Mobile store, authorized wrestler, not an actual dealer. One week, I had an amazing week, sold 55 phones, brand new activations on a business account with 55 high-end phones at that time. When I got my next check, they said my paperwork was not in order, and thus they couldn't pay me. As a side note, they always told us to make copies of all paperwork in case this happened, so you can show it to the manager and get it resolved within a day. I went over my backup paperwork with my boss. He said everything looked to be in order and he would have the office cut me a check. I went to the office and they told me it was still not in order. I immediately gave them my store key and quit on the spot. I did go through collections and they did settle before I took them to court. The company did go out of business after a few years because they tried that with many other employees and eventually lead to an investigation by the government, according to an old coworker I bumped into years later. <coughs> Lol, I had an inside hint from ours that there was about to be mass layoffs and my name was on the list. I scheduled my week-long vacation and returning the day before layoffs were presumed to have happened. My boss reamed me out for daring to take a vacation. She said I would never advance in the company if I chose such a formative time and a project to take a vacation. She told me I would never be an executive producer if I went on a vacation before project launch, even though I wouldn't be able to touch it for the week I was away anyways, and that I would always be known in the television industry as lazy. I chilled, took my vacation, and returned. She was mad and said that she was upset with me for having left and made her take care of my project for me, chewed me out in front of the entire company in the conference room. I chilled and was like, aren't you laying off a bunch of us tomorrow? I'm just waiting for you to fire me so I can collect unemployment. Entire room literally starts panicking and management tries to understand how the fuck I knew about layoffs. It was my one true Regina George causing chaos moment in my life. I'm a physician assistant and took a job at an urgent care. After working there for about a month I noticed some irregularities, such as some medications being expired and sometimes a lack of supplies. I wrote that off as the office manager not being as astute as she should have been and brought it up to the doctor who owned the place. He said he would talk to her and straighten it out. Then one of the medical assistants came to me and said you know this has been going on forever, right? She then said that things would never change and to get used to it because the expired medications had been on the shelf for months and they were told to never throw them out. She then also told me that the autoclave, the machine that sterilizes instruments, was broken and all they did was wash the instruments in soap and water and put them in the autoclave anyway to get them as clean as possible. That was the end of that. I made out a formal complaint to the state medical board and never showed up again. The state actually came in the very next day and raided the place. They shut him down immediately. They found so many things wrong that not only did they keep the place out of business, they suspended his license. He was also prosecuted on federal charges because he was running a scam for truck driver physical exams. <laughs> Worked for a restaurant slash pub. The owner would come in with his buddies for hours at a time, a lot of times forcing the bartender to stay way past close serving them. Obviously was told not to charge anything because it's the owner's party. After hours of drinks on the house, no tip. Not even from the owner. This started to happen frequently. Usually we'd put up with it if they'd leave or be done before close. Then we started hearing that the kitchen staff hadn't been paid in a month. Bartenders were being paid because we made like $4 an hour. But the kitchen wasn't a tipped kitchen and made a decent wage. Turns out the owner was a total drunk fuckwit which should have been obvious and buried himself in debt. A week later we were told our checks weren't there on the day they were supposed to be. Then two days later still no checks. I told them if my check wasn't there tomorrow I won't come in for my shift. They said it came. I got there and they said well what I meant was it's actually on the way. I talked to the and I walked out. I later found out no checks were ever issued there again. They tried to pay some people cash, but it fell apart very soon after. Edit. For those guessing the place, this was about 12 years ago, and it went out of business not too long after I left. Someone else bought it renamed it, and made it work, and now I believe it's still there, and operating quite well. 
I was working at one of those stands that sells flash frozen ice cream droplets. You know the ones. It was at an amusement park. At one point it's a hot summer day, and I'm standing in the sun in front of my minus 40 degree freezer, simultaneously burning and freezing at the same time. I have a long line of customers, because I was near the exit to a stunt, show featuring a particular super harrow, that is a night of the darkness. I scoop some ice cream balls into the plastic tray, slide my scoop over the top, to knock off the excess ice cream quickly, and then hand it to the customer in exchange for their money. A wild manager appears. Suddenly a manager tells me I didn't level off the ice cream correctly. He takes the scoop and small bowl from my hands and levels it off, just like I had done for the precious customer. He then dumps it out back into the freezer, and makes me do it again, while standing over my shoulder. Mind you, I still have a long line of customers. So I do it again, and this time he also is not pleased, and berates me some, and makes me dump it out, and do it again. So I do literally the same thing, a third time, and this time he's somehow fine with it, and wanders off to go annoy another teenager making minimum wage. So now I'm confused as to what I was doing wrong, and have a line of customers staring at me, leaving me thoroughly embarrassed. I process to overfill every container and hand them out to each customer, while not taking any money from them. Then I simply walked out to my car and drove home. I never turned off, or secured my register, I never formally quit, I never said a word to anyone, I just walked away. If I was doing something wrong then fine, but there is no time where it's appropriate to scold and reprimand an employee in front of customers and I haven't been back to that amusement park as an employee or customer since. I was already there 3 hours past the time my shift was supposed to end along with everyone else who was on my shift. We were all very poed. I get that you often have to stay after when you work in food service, but everyone from the next shift was already there and there was zero reason for us to be there for 3 extra hours. Finally someone asked to go home, and the manager started screaming in the middle of the restaurant floor that, just because your shift is supposed to end at 10 doesn't mean you get to leave then. I tell you, when you get to leave, you are all just numbers on a spreadsheet to us, we can replace you in a heartbeat, if you don't want to be here. So, I dropped all the money on the table in front of her, and said replace me then, fuck you. Found out later, that they lost damn near half their staff that night, because most others followed my lead after. There was a huge football game the next day right across the street from the place, and they got to deal with that with no servers. I went to the game, and had the time of my life laugh out loud. It was a fucking I hop. I was getting married. I had a temp job and told them on my first day that I needed a weekend off in a couple of months for my wedding. I reminded them every couple of weeks, had it on the calendar, and even reminded them that Monday. That weekend came and I was on the schedule. I told my boss that I needed it off for my wedding and she said, you're just a kid, can't you move it? We really need the parts. Admittedly, I was 21 marrying my 19 year old girlfriend, but yeah. I laughed at her and left. We were scheduled Saturday and Sunday, to attendance points and you're fired, so I assumed that I'd be job hunting on Monday after my wedding. I went to another temp agency on Monday, and had a job lined up for Monday evening. On Tuesday, the temp job called and asked if I was coming back. I told that person, the temp agency lady, what they'd done to me. She was upset that they'd done that, tried to get me to go back, but I liked the new job and stayed there. Worked a retail job as a cashier at store, whose name sounds like hose. One part of that job, as I'm sure many who have shopped there know, is to sign customers up for our, rather predatory, credit card. We were supposed to ask every customer, no matter the dollar amount of the transaction. Well, I was helping a woman and told her she could save dollar sign X if she signed up for the credit card. She seemed interested, but I could clearly tell that English was not her first language. I grabbed one of our pamphlets and made it abundantly clear to her that this is a credit card, not a rewards account or something of that nature. When she understood, she said oh no, not today. Understandable. Well, I didn't know one of my supervisors was standing behind me. After she left, he asked why I did all of that, and if I try to talk every interested customer out of signing up. When I explained myself, 
He said next time, sign them up. They don't know any better handed in my red vest. That was it. I worked at a Dollar General for about a month. That's all I could put up with. The big thing I struggled with was how I was constantly criticized for not stocking shelves well, but I was never given specific direction as to how I was to improve at my shelf stocking. Literally some sheet, like your stocking shelves poorly, do better was what I got told by the manager many times. Cracking under this pressure on the last day I worked a full shift I poured all of my might into what I believed to be the best shelf stocking I had ever done for that hellhole. I cleaned the bathroom spotless, but there was never a complaint about that anyways. I even had the key holder, assistant manager type figure, check all of my work on the shelves and bathroom, where I was met with praise and confirmation. To answer this riddled question, the manager greeted me at the door the next morning for a run through of my performance, where I was naive enough to believe that I was finally getting the pat on the back I had wanted so badly. Instead she tried to convince me that I left a huge sheet stain in the men's room toilet bowl and left her with my worst stocking job yet. I got mad. Told her that I felt as though I was being treated unfairly. She told me that she was sorry that I couldn't take criticism. I told her that I was sorry that she had to pull applications and find a new sale associate to deal with her bullshit. Know your worth people. Not on the spot, but I was passed over for a promotion for a role I'd been doing unofficially for 6 months. There was no official position for it when I started doing it. It was one of the manager's responsibilities and they delegated it to me. Honestly I was happy to do it, and I was frequently praised for how efficient and thorough I was doing it. So when an official position opened up to do it full time, I seemed like the obvious choice. A bunch of my coworkers didn't even apply for it because they told me they didn't think there was any point since I was obviously getting the job. They gave it to a guy that worked in a different department and had no experience using the complicated system required for that job. Then the manager asked me to train him in it, except I wasn't really asked. I was told in a way that sounded like it was asking. We called it being voluntold. I refused. I said to the manager, if I'm not good enough to get the job, I'm not good enough to teach someone else how to do it. The manager then accused me throwing a temper tantrum. I quit about a week later. Honestly that wasn't the only reason. That was just the straw that broke the camel's back. Even the other managers couldn't believe he said that. I worked for a placement agency at a manufacturing facility. I had worked 7 of my 8 hour day when one of the supervisors came by to ask anyone on the crew I was on if they would stay for another 4 hours. We all looked at each other and politely declined. They came back one more time to ask and again, we declined. Then they came back and demanded that one of us stay behind for the 4 hour shift or all of us were going to be written up for attendance. This pissed everyone off, but because we were work placement instead of employees, we were unsure who to talk to. Some of the other crew told the supervisor they can't because they have to pick up their kids, etc. When the supervisor left, the crew had multiple people saying they can't get written up again or they would lose their job. I had scheduled a dinner with my in-laws, so I called the husband and told him the situation and that I would stay. Told the crew, I'll stay, don't worry. Told the supervisor, got put on another crew that had work for one hour but was required to stay for the full four hours. Next day, I called the main office and explained the situation. They said they had a representative on site due to this manufacturer being such a large client. Called the on site representative and explained the situation. Was told they have a lot of attendance issues. Again, explained I had never had attendance issues and everyone on my crew was threatened with being written up for not staying 4 hours after their scheduled shift. Own site representative still defended the actions of the supervisor and threw attitude at me. Fine, I don't need you, I quit. And that's the story of how I learned about my workers rights and workplace harassment. I worked at a privately owned McDonald's when I was about 17. I worked in restaurants since I was 15. So I was kind of like the head cook as far as that can go at McDonald's lol. Ran the grill and made all the sandwiches. This manager who spent 20 years working at the place was a complete beach to everyone in the store but I worked day shift and she worked night 
so I never had to deal with her. One day, they switched her schedule cause another manager went out of town. She got on me because I didn't cleanly shave that morning, grabbed a sheet he used, razor they kept in the office, and made me shave dry in the dish pit. About an hour later, we are getting slammed. I'm tossing out burgers quicker than two jiggles of a jackrabbit says, but because I was putting the onions on before the condiments, this waste of space starts flipping sheet on me and telling me that everything is getting sent out wrong. I turned to her and said, you're a beach, and I'm an asshole. We can't work together. Threw my apron on the ground and walked out in the middle of the busiest Friday afternoons we've had. Edit. Thanks for the award, kind citizen. I worked as a manager in this really awesome cafe slash bar. My interview was basically drinking a bottle of wine with the owner whilst chatting. Totally relaxed vibe, local artwork on the walls, which she sold for no commission, indie music as background noise, so you could still have a conversation etc. One of the guys who worked there was in a band and would often go on tour and she always made sure his job was waiting for him when he got back. Fast forward 3 years and she became pregnant with twins and decided that she wanted to be a Sam. So she sold the place to a young guy who purchased it as a gift for his fiancé. A nice gift, no? But it soon became apparent that he did this because she couldn't actually hold down a job due to even the most simplest of tasks being entirely beyond her. It took me 4 weeks to teach her how to use the coffee machine. She spent the evening shifts giving free biz to her mates and she totally gave up on using the panini machine. After finally mastering the coffee machine, she announced that they were going to be redecorating, so we would either have to take a week off unpaid or use the holiday time. Everyone was forced to use the holiday time. Came back a week later and we totally didn't recognize the place. It now had white walls with huge TVs blaring out dance music in a space that only had 12 tables. So loud that we couldn't hear what anyone was saying. We checked the rotors, and I had lost 10 hours a week, but the band guy had lost 20 hours. Naturally we asked what the fuck, and she informed us that she could run the place without us so cut out hours. We asked if they could delay the new rotors by a month to give us chance to find extra work elsewhere. I was okay as I had a second job that begged me to be full time, but band guy didn't. She said that as we didn't have contract with her, she didn't have to give us any notice. Not gonna lie, I was fuming, so I took my apron off, placed my keys on the counter, and said that as we didn't have a contract I didn't have to give any notice that I quit. Then promptly walked out and never went back again. The place closed down within 3 months. I worked for a junk company that initially started off pretty good until it was bought out by new owner from British Columbia. The new owner started implementing so many new policies that prevented us from making the decisions we once were able to make and also new restrictions that would make us lose our profit share for the day at the smallest mistake. It didn't help that she also hired a douchebag ringer to be our new general manager who could not have been more out of touch with normal employees. Not even a month after this new douche manager arrived he kept saying we were messing up constantly saying we've had the worst records of the entire company the worst driving records etc it's like he only thrived off of telling us what we did wrong. So we were really busy one day and instead of actually starting work he wanted us to have another meeting where he could scold us for messing up constantly it was also only a week after the last meeting, we're only supposed to have them once a month. The meeting was set at 730m for him to scold us for half an hour and then get to work on a busy day where we are forced to go as fast as we can without messing up even once. The stress of being forced to work faster while also screwing us over with all these stupid new regulations had reached its boiling point with me. So instead of going to the meeting I called him at 600 am and told him I was never coming in again. He begged me not to leave and asked if I could at least do that one day, but I said no go screw yourself and hung up the phone and blocked his and all his associates numbers, then went back to sleep. I now work for myself, and from what I heard, after I quit a ton of people quit from that place I can't imagine it's gonna stay in business much longer. Edit. Wow I have never had this popular of a comment. Thank you so much everyone, and don't let anybody tell you what your value is. Back in 1998 I was working for Dell selling computers over the phones. 
People were not quite ordering online yet. Anyway, it was so easy. I was making close to dollar sign 100k a year because of how the commission structure was living in Austin as a 23 year old. So one day my manager asks me to train a new team of salespeople because I was one of the top sellers on the floor every month. I turned this group into the most baddest sales team. My crew of 8 were all in the top 20 every week and were kicking ass. After 2 months, I show up on a Monday and none of the salespeople are there, except my team and a bunch of other new faces I hadn't seen before. Turns out Dell didn't like paying commissions and health insurance and 401 ks, so they fired all the salespeople and replaced them with temp workers making $12 an hour. My entire team was the first group of temp works. I was not aware of this. They were told they had to prove themselves and be converted to full time with benefits. They were never going to do it. I told them they can all go fuck themselves and quit. I heard that week they cleaned house and everyone, even managers who told me what was happening were gone and all replaced by temp hourly people. I was a senior production supervisor in a factory and needed an office for the mountain of paperwork that my job involved. My manager decided that the boss's son needed my office more than me as he was more important. He'd literally just left university and didn't know his ass from his elbow. His role in the company was to wander around getting feedback from the staff to see if they could implement new innovative ideas. No paperwork needed just a notebook to pass ideas back to daddy. My manager told me at 8am that I no longer had an office and to do my paperwork in the canteen. So I asked where do you propose I put my three filing cabinets? In the bathroom maybe. His response was, if you don't like it, you know where the door is. Okay, no problem I'll see you around. Packs my sheet into my car and head home. 15 missed calls by 3pm asking for information. I pointed them all in the direction of the owner's son. Next morning I get a knock on the door from the owner wanting my contacts list so they could get things done. Nope that's my contact list that I brought with me to the company point, so it leaves with me too. Accused me of being unreasonable. I laughed in his face and told him to get the manager to contact people he knows to resolve your problems, knowing full well that the manager has no contacts whatsoever. Enjoyed a fantastic three months off. Got contacted by a rival company who said, when you are ready to rejoin the workforce give us a call. Now working for the rival company getting an extra 20,000 a year and treated like one of the family instead of like sheet by the previous company. They closed their doors in 2010, and I laughed my ass off at them closing down. I had given birth to a baby about 3 months prior, and we usually had a pretty casual, relaxed dress code at the office. Corporate was coming, though, and we were all told to dress up. Okay, no big. So I woke up early that morning, and my baby was still sleeping in my bed. It was dark in my room, and I went to put on my outfit, which included a long black skirt. It didn't hit me until I actually got to work that I had put on the wrong one. The one I had on had a slit up to mid-thigh. It was too late to go back and change, so I figured I'd just stay at my desk as much as possible so corporate couldn't see. Well, my boss saw. He ordered me into his office, and with the grossest, most lascivious look on his face, brought out a pair of scissors and told me that the slit wasn't high enough. Fuck that noise. Eater, since it's been asked several times and I should have said it to begin with, no, I didn't report him, unfortunately. I was young and afraid, and I was his executive assistant slash receptionist. Because some of his employees were sheet, he got calls almost daily demanding to speak to the president of the branch him and every time I begged them not to because I would inevitably end up yelling I have a team of lawyers and I'm a multimillionaire and I will end you. So, no, I unfortunately did not report him. He old crushed me. Not quite on the spot, but the manager was telling the new hires, which included me, how he beat the crap out of someone for some reason that I cannot recall. Apparently the court case had been dragging on for quite some time. Alrighty. Little crazy, but what manager is completely sane? Then a few weeks later a hurricane comes through. Pretty bad. My house only lost power for a day. But most of my coworkers lost power for at least two weeks. 
so we eventually go back to work, and the manager is telling us the Harrow Ring story of how he managed to find a generator when a hurricane is coming. I'll spare you the details, but it's pretty much impossible to find a generator if a hurricane is about to hit. So this nutcase is trying to install this generator at his house and sees someone driving by, eyeballing his generator. Or so he imagines. Like any completely normal person, the manager pulls out a gun and fires a few rounds into the air to scare them off. I can only imagine what the poor person driving by thought when he saw this asshole pull out a gun and start shooting. In response to the gunshots his neighbor comes running over. Why has no one called the cops yet to see if everything is okay? My manager tells him that someone is trying to steal his generator and if it goes missing, he's going to hold the neighbor responsible. At this point in the story, my mouth is hanging open and I'm like what the fuck did I just listen to? This man is insane. Why is the neighbor responsible for his generator? None of this makes sense. I slowly noped out of that job. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if he ending up murdering all of his co-workers one day in a fit of rage. Logistics Brokerage in 2019. It was a small company, only 20 employees in the back room of a shared workspace. My hours were 7.30 am to 4.30 pm. Now this was a 35 minutes commute both ways, and if I missed the 5 pm train I wouldn't get home till 7. I would pack up and leave right at 430 and almost have to run to the train to get a seat. One day I came in and was instantly pulled into a meeting with all the managers. I was yelled at for leaving at 430, said my shift ends when everyone else goes home, and I just sat there waiting for my time to speak. When it was time I told them my hours were set by them at the time of hiring with nothing said about staying till everyone is done. I had a family I wanted to get home to and all my work was done by 4 anyway. I got yelled at about worth ethic and how I will look bad to my coworkers. I basically said fuck it and went to my desk and sat on reddit all morning, went to the bar at lunch and got drunk and came back to work. By that point I was done, my wife agreed with me that the place sucked and I just packed up my desk and left in front of everyone at like 215. It felt amazing to ignore my managers calling after me and then ignoring all the calls and texts. I worked as a mechanic back in college. A kid came in with some pretty big issues on his car. As a tire shop we mostly dealt with small repairs and simple maintenance. I told the kid it might be best if he goes to the dealership or a shop that specializes larger repairs like what he needed. A new manager had recently taken over our store and the customer and I went into the office to tell him what I found while driving the car. I didn't know this manager very well, but I did know him long enough to know that he was more of a salesman than a mechanic. This manager started selling this college kid on replacing all kinds of things to fix his issues, and since financial aid just dropped the kid was seriously considering getting the work done. It would be one thing if the manager knew what he was selling was going to fix the kid's car, but he had only ever seen it though the office window in the parking lot. He only knew what I told him, which was the kid needed more than we usually handle. This guy was just selling a kid thousands of dollars worth of repairs on a car that might not even be worth that much. Eventually I butted in the conversation with um, we are not sure all this will fix the issues and we don't even have the equipment necessary to do some of these repairs. The manager gave the kid a printout of his estimate and then dragged me into the back to give me a Batman voice saying, if you ever jeopardize a sale of mine again then it will be the last thing you ever do. I promptly locked up my toolbox and wished him luck on doing mechanical work without a mechanic and went home, called around town and found another mechanic job the same day. Oh boy, I've been with the company about a year and half. Let's recap first though, we have a company meeting every month for about an hour to talk about goals, performance, and one special topic usually like what does integrity mean to you, or how can we improve our culture. Let me just say that the culture and vibe was toxic and my boss was extremely number oriented. As a root driver for this role, I was constantly in and out of my vehicle and interacting with customers. Basically, I finally approached my manager and offered tips on how we can improve the route, gain more business because of the time saved, etc. He told me that I had been underperforming the past year, 
complaining about my role and not appreciating the fact that I have a job. So, I handed my resignation over the next say, typed a very professional email, and gave them my notice. I wasn't allowed in the building and had to hand in my stuff. Fast forward two weeks later, I'm appreciated and couldn't be more proud of where I'm at. My feedback was welcomed, and now seven months later, my boss shows me emails almost daily about customers complimenting my personality and attention to detail. I have received a raise, and preparing for our annual vacation the company takes their top performers. Know your worth. Mental health. I've told this story other times, and recently told it to a coworker who followed my example but here goes, I'm out of college, young, landed my first job around 60k a year, early 2000s. First few months go splendidly 6 months in I'm lagging 14 months in I'm suicidal. Can't find joy in my life. I'm depressed. I don't want to go on. One morning as I woke up, to go to work I had an epiphany I didn't have to go. I could literally just, not. I called my boss, and said I wasn't going to make it in that day or ever again. I thanked him for the work, thanked him for the opportunity, and thanked him for his time invested. He offered to match whatever I was going to be making, wherever I was going, and I told him I wasn't going anywhere else. Throw my desk junk away. I took the weekend off. The following Monday I walked into a construction company, and asked for a job. I told them I'd do anything. I'm 15 years in. There's been some shitty jobs. The company I started with went under after 8 years there, and I starved a couple winters making ends meet with odd jobs. I'm now working doing an interesting steady job with a crew I can honestly say I love I'd give my life for these men. I've been married 13 years we've had our ups and downs. We have two beautiful babies together. It's taken me damn near two hours to write this, because we've been playing and planting new plans I find at work. I get asked from time to time if I hate my life or hate my job, because some days it really sucks in the cold and the heat and the hard work, and I smile and say it's been almost 16 years since the night I held a gun in my mouth, because I didn't want to go to work. If I don't like it here anymore one day I'll go do something else. I worked for a company for a little more than 5 years. I had worked weekends, holidays and nights, so they were able to run and complete orders on time, even worked 23 days in a row for them no questions asked. One day a supervisor was trying, embarrass me in front of his department, so I started shouting sheet with him making him and everyone else laugh. Figuring that we were on the same page one didn't think much of it and went on my way. A little while later I get called into the plant manager's office and he asked what happened earlier with me and ex-supervisor. Explained everything and he told me that it sounded like we were fighting and that I hurt his feelings. I told him I didn't mean it that way and had no foul intentions. But if someone was going to try and embarrass me in front of my co-workers for their own enjoyment I was going to sit there and take it like a beach. Plant manager's exact words were, well, if you want to stay employed here you will. My response was, well consider my time here temporary then. And walked out. A week later I put my two day notice in that way they didn't have time for me to train someone else and walked out. They tried getting me to stay to train my replacement and I told them they could find someone else to make their beach, but it wasn't going to be me anymore. I had been working at a pizza place that refused to give me any kind of raise despite working there for 2 years and never taking a day off, always covering shifts and training myself how to do every job from cooking to dispatching drivers to emptying the safe. I also got passed over for a shift leader position which I had been gunning for for a while since I already did the work by my sister who is 3 years younger than me. One afternoon I came in for a meeting, and every single person got a raise, except me because despite running an entire restaurant almost by myself at nights, I hadn't had enough gift card sales. My sister got an extra $1.25 per hour as a raise, and she had only been working there for about 3 months. At that point, I took off work shirt and hat, went to the area manager who was visiting, and told him I'm done and to mail my last check to me. He called me later and asked me, why did you quit? And I gave him a long list, but I was especially mad that I wasn't given a promotion and I didn't get my raise, which had been promised to me for more than a year. 
Well, you don't need a raise I can just give you an extra hour a week and that's more than you would make with the extra $0.25 we were going to give you. Also, you don't need to be a shift leader. You're already doing the work of one and have been so why stop now? Just keep doing your best and eventually you'll grow with the company. I laughed so hard over the phone I almost cried. I told him I'm working this job while in school and I had no plans to grow with the company. I wanted to be compensated for my own goddamn work. Telling me he would give me $0.25 after 2 years was enough. I told him to never contact me again. I didn't quit on the spot because I had a mortgage to pay, but I started looking for a new job the same day. My dad died in April of 2020 due to a battle with cancer. He died on a Wednesday morning around 10am. I got the call at 10.30 but was working on a super urgent project, so I didn't leave work until almost noon. At some point later that afternoon a colleague must have sent me an email asking me about an entry in our finance system. Nothing urgent. Due to the urgency of the project, I worked Thursday, Friday, and Monday. Admittedly, I was grieving. My dad wasn't old. He had just turned 60. Losing him faked me up pretty badly, so I really just focused on making sure I did the things I needed to on the project I was working on to make sure it stayed on target. The funeral was Tuesday, and when I returned to work on Wednesday I had a calendar invite for a meeting with my boss. I knew this wasn't a good sign. I was formally reprimanded for not having responded to that email from Wednesday. I replied that that was the day my dad died and was told, just because you're out of the office doesn't mean you can just be unplugged from the world. It took every bit of courage and restraint I had to not immediately flip the desk over and quit on the spot. If you're reading this Alina, you were the worst manager I ever worked for and I hope you rot in hell. If I may repost another answer I gave in a thread in this sub of similar nature, in 2011 or so, when companies taking advantage of the desperate on of the unemployed was in full swing, the recession was on pretty hard at that time, I found myself working for a temp agency that supplied day laborers. We had to come in every day as early as possible, they opened at 5, and get your name on the list. If they got a call in from someone who needed temp workers, they called out names on the list. If you were there, you got the job for the day. They'd only call you out once though. Say you were outside having a cig or going to the bathroom tough sheet. Furthermore, inside this place were chairs bolted to the ground facing a TV playing a safety training video on loop all day. So, one day, I actually managed to land a job. Yay. Other side of the city, I had to drive myself. Okay fine. I get there. We spoiled power cables onto giant pallets for 8 faking hours. End of the day. They'll send us a check. A week later, I get it. It was minimum wage, and then the company took their fee out afterwards. So, you ended up getting paid, essentially, $2 below minimum wage. That's when I said fuck this, I'm out. About 2 years later, I got something in the mail about a class action lawsuit against them. I can't remember what it detailed exactly, but of course I signed in on it, because fact them. Six years later, like literally a few months ago, I finally got the payout. Eight dollars. The end. I took a week off of work, while my dog was dying. I had over 130 hours of saved PTO at that point, at a part time retail job, that I'd been at for 18 months. Needles to say, I rarely called out, often covered for others, worked every holiday, and loved it. Anyway, on day 4 I get a call from my manager. She says she's sorry about my dog, but they have a business to run, and if I don't come in the next day, they'll take it as my 2 weeks notice. I look down at my 15 year old, 6 pound dog, laying in my lap, unable to eat on her own, unable to control her bladder and bowels. Completely dependent on me for care and affection in her last days, and I told my manager that I absolutely would not be coming in. I hate that it ended that way, especially when that manager left a few months later, and I more than likely would have gotten her job. But I think about my little pup, how absolutely perfect she was, and how much she loved me, and I'd never do it any differently, except maybe go above my manager's head. I loved that dog more than I've ever loved anyone or anything else in my life. 
I was with her every minute of every day until I was able to take her to the vet to end her suffering. And other than a short period after her final vet visit, her ashes have been with me every day since. Eta, thank you for the awards and for all of lovely and kind comments. She was my sweet little princess, and I still think about her all of the time, even a year and a half after she passed. I've posted more slash other details about her and the end of her life other places on Reddit, but given the positive response, I'd love to share more about my girl. It'll be long, so don't feel bad about not reading. I got her about a month before she turned 5 from her original owner. She was probably about 9 pounds when I got her, extremely overweight for her, but I quickly got her down to a healthy 7 to 8 lbs. I was very young and already married. I'd suffered two miscarriages that year, was unhappy with my husband, and lonely. So I got a dog. We drove about an hour to get her, and by the time we got home, we were thoroughly bonded. She was with me through me separation and divorce, living alone for the first time in my life, having to move back home, moving away again, etc. At one point, I was living in a basement apartment and working nights. Sadly, I was told that she was spending all night crying and howling. I had just moved there and couldn't move again so soon. She had to go live with my parents. When I finally was able to move again, I found out that my dog had gone blind over the last few months. I hadn't been able to visit because I was working 80 hours a week, saving to move, and my mother simply neglected to tell me. I was terrified of how she would handle a move at that point and my mother was trying to convince me that it would be too much and they should keep her. I obviously didn't let that happen. She handled it like a champ, and my only regret at that point was that she didn't have much of a yard. Eventually we were able to move again, and then the only concern was stairs. It was never really an issue, since she could go up just fine, she just wouldn't go down. I was just glad she had a nice yard again. She was so sweet and so smart. She'd wait at the end of the porch for me to get home, wagging so hard she was moving her whole body side to side. I'd pick her up and hug her to my shoulder, and she'd press her perfect little face into my cheek. Oh man, I'm crying now. That was literally the best feeling in the world. The amount of love she conveyed with that precious action was enough to break your heart and remodel it into something better. She made me better. I'd give almost anything to feel her face pressing into my cheek again. When it came time to take her to the vet, I only had a part-time job. I waited until payday and had enough to have her put to sleep, but I had nowhere I wanted to bury her that I knew I could always go back to and I was a little short for cremation. I ended up posting on Facebook and offering to repay with my next paycheck and got several offers to help. I was getting in touch with the vet to ask what they recommend. I didn't want any money coming to me personally when I got a message. A kind stranger had paid the entire bill already. I bawled thanked her profusely, then publicly thanked her. I'm still incredibly grateful to her. We, fiancé and I, do have another dog, who we got, while my princess was still with us. He was very young when she died, and I was worried about how he would handle it, since she was his absolute favorite thing in the world. She tolerated him. She only really showed him affection, if they were separated for more than like an hour, and then she'd let him lick her face, and might even lick him back once in a while. Anyway, our monkey man did okay. He had kind of a delayed reaction, as you'd expect. His morning was about 6 months later, and seemed to last about 3 months. He still reacts when we talk about sister which is honestly heartbreaking, and so incredibly wholesome and perfect. So that's more about the best dog ever. Even if no one reads it, I can't even begin to express how happy it makes me to get such a positive reaction to talking about my awesome dog. Also, my little man is pretty great too. Super smart and one of those dogs that's so cute, everyone stops to talk about him. From 15 to 17 years old I worked at a family dollar. It was in a pretty crappy part of town, and I had to put up with a silly amount of bullshit. One day I heard what sounded like hammering coming from the back of the store. I went back there and found a 40-ish year old man on the ground having a seizure. The hammering sound I had heard was his arm rhythmically slapping the bottom of the shelves. He was also repeatedly hitting his head on the hard tile floor. 
I opened a pillow from the nearby shelf and placed it under his head so he wouldn't hurt himself any further then called 911. An ambulance arrived a little while later and took the man to the hospital. The medics were very nice to me and told me I did a good job making sure he didn't hit his head more than he already had. As a young guy I was pretty proud that I had kept cool and been helpful even in just a small way and it just felt good. A short time later my manager arrived at the store to allow me to take my designated 30 minute lunch. I told her what happened and she asked if I had paid for the pillow. I had not. I left and while I was home I decided I wasn't going back. A couple years later I got my EMT license and later my paramedic license and have been enjoying helping people for the past 14 years. Still never paid for that pillow. I was working for an it startup around 2003. Fixing desktops, setting up small networks, selling new builds, etc. I called in sick once and I mean I was sick. Fever, shaking, vomiting and diarrhea. Sick. I had called in the night before. About 10.30 I get a call from the guy who runs the shop begging me to go to the office of the guy who owns the shop and fix one of his employees PCs. I refused at first because I didn't want to get anyone else sick but he told me they were all leaving for lunch together today. So I pull on my sweats and a big thick coat and head over. When I get there I can see the video driver, Windows 98 or XP, I don't recall, had blown up on the guy's workstation, 8-bit glory. So, I went to the card manufacturer's website and downloaded the driver, then installed it. Clicked around for a while to see if I could trigger any other problems, rebooted just for measure, then called the shop. Yeah, fixed, video driver flaked no idea why, we might want to consider getting this guy another box soon just in case. Headed back home, I feel terrible. I got home and was almost back to sleep when my phone wouldn't stop ringing and it was the guy at the shop. Dollar sign S-H-O-P-D-U-D-E, what did you do buddy? Of course, I had no idea what he's talking about. I'm like, dollar sign M-E, dude, I told you. I reinstalled the video driver, confirmed it stuck, and bailed, why? Dollar sign S-H-O-P-D-U-D-E, well, they are really mad like really mad. They need you to come right back and fix things. Dollar sign M-E, are you kidding? I have a 100F fever, can you at least find out what they are saying is wrong so I know what to look for. So, and I have no idea why other than I was high on cold meds, I went back. This is a 25 minute drive each way. I walk in, ot, still no one here, but it's after lunch. Oh well, go back over to the computer in question, everything seems fine. I can open email, browsers, access network files, and even print. So I printed out a news website, and left it on the workstation, marked test print and dated it. I called dollar sign shopdude to ask if he had learned more, to which he said he hadn't. So I look all around the offices and no one is there, but I didn't go into dollar sign o w n e r s office. The door was closed, and I didn't want to get him sick anyway. I call back dollar sign shopdude and tell him what's up, and told him the truth. Dollar sign me, everything I can think of works with dollar sign dbag underscore employes workstation. I'm about to pass out man, for real. I can't stop shivering. I need to go back to bed. Call me if you learn something, if I'm not too far I can come back. At the end of the day, I got another call from dollar sign shopdude. Dollar sign shopdude, buddy, dollar sign owner wants me to fire you. I don't know what you did, but he's really really mad. Dollar sign me, what do you mean? I fixed dbag underscore employees workstation. Dollar sign shopdude, but they are saying you didn't, buddy. Dollar sign me, then I don't understand it a shop, dude. There was a blatant issue when I got there, everything, and I mean everything worked great when I left twice. I'm also sick as a dog and should never have left the house to start with. Did they even tell you what the actual problem was? They were never there when I went it either time. Dollar sign shopdude. They said the screen was all messed up and they could read it. 
Dollar sign M E. Right. The video driver had balked on dollar sign D B A G underscore E M P L O Y E S P C. Like we said, I reinstalled it and checked everything else he does on that PC, and it worked like a charm. Dollar sign S H O P D U D E. Well, they are saying that it's not fixed yet, that it looks different, but that it's not fixed, and no one can read it. Ding in my head. Office full of 50 year olds. Dollar sign ME. Wait, I left it at the default desktop resolution. Is he complaining that the default resolution is making things too small? A shop guy. Long pause. Um. Dollar sign ME. So let me get this straight. I'm sick as hell. I still go out on an on site for you. Twice when you're literally a 4 minute drive away, for something I fixed correctly the first time, and I'm incompetent at risk of losing my job, because alcoholic sexual harassing douchebag owner, who once told me, that women are like dogs in that, if you let them get away with something once, they expect it forever dollar sign owner, is listening to broke dick unfaithful braggart womanizing dollar sign dbag underscore employees is too goddamned stupid to even adjust his own fac and desktop resolution? A shop guy. Dollar sign me. Fuck him. Fuck you. Mail me my check next Friday. I'm faking done. I'd rather sell ice in minute. North Dakota. Oh, and I just wiped out the Halo se server I was running for us in the back on my key. You don't get that either. And that's how I ended a two year job helping my friend a shop dude open up his dream store with his silent partner dollar sign owner. Needless to say, we never really talked after that. Got married, was gonna move across the country to be with my significant other. I gave them months in advance heads up. They asked me to train my replacement, cool, no problem. The time frame in which I wanted to move was coming closer and closer no replacement. Work is piling up. No one from headquarters is talking to me or helping me with questions I have. I worked with students. Each student was a unique case. Sometimes something would come up that I wasn't quite sure how to handle, so I'd ask and I wouldn't receive a response for weeks, sometimes months if ever. I'm basically now running classes on my own despite me not being a teacher and every time I step into my workplace I have a panic attack. I check my email, and there's a letter from my boss saying he appreciated what I do for them, but when am I leaving, because they can't have too much of an overlap between me and my replacement. Blood boils a little, but I ask him for a week off, to get my affairs in order, so that I may give him a definitive date. He says that's fine. I get a call the next day, early in the morning. It's my birthday weekend. I'm going to pick up my brother who flew in from out of state. It's my boss, and he tells me that, because I'm a part-time employee, I cannot take time off, even though I have over a week's worth of sick hours saved, and that if I call in sick, that would look suspicious, so I can't do that. I tell him I will let him know my decision once I decided what to do. Waited out the weekend, emailed him and the actual teacher on Monday, and told them that I'd be quitting, and I'll turn my equipment in at the end of the week, then went up to the mountains, where I would have no phone reception at all. Was a vegetarian at the time, so if you put 10 tubs of chopped meat in front of me, I wouldn't have known what they were. Subway, first day on the job. Guy quickly goes over what the tubs of things are, and I mean quickly. This is turkey ham salami chicken and you've got the lettuce tomato onion, mayo olive oil etc. Says it's pretty easy and straightforward, and he's stepping out, and would be back in a bit. Leaving me completely alone in the shop, less than 10 minutes, after I had arrived for the first time. Not even 2 minutes after he leaves, a guy with a bluetooth headset, walks in speaking to someone on the phone, and tells the guy to hold on, and just starts naming several custom sandwiches one after another. Before I can even reply, he says he'll be back, to pick them up in 30 minutes and walks out of the door. I stand there, dumbfounded, having zero idea of what he ordered. So I waited. When the manager came back, I asked if I could go. He said, what do you mean, go? I said go, leave. He was confused and said, yeah, I guess. And I handed him my hat and went home. I know now that, no matter what store or shop it is, they aren't supposed to leave you alone in the store. Especially on my first day, first hour, first few minutes of arriving, and having no idea what I'm doing. 
Another grocery store story. Me 17. Working at Ingalls. I was into emo back then, so I put a blonde stripe in my hair. I show up to work, and this balloon of manager huffs her way up to me telling me I can't have that, and I have to get rid of it, or I can't come back. I looked at her. Then looked at the punk girl who worked the movie slash game rental counter. Yes Ingalls used to have an in-store movie rental, who has multicolored hair spiked up willy-nilly. I mean it looked like she dipped her head into a bucket of rainbow colored hair gel. I looked at her then back to the manager twice I don't know if she was too stupid to register what I was doing or didn't care. But I said um, really? Yes. You can't have that here. Fix it or don't come back I wasn't about to ruin my hair. So I said, okay and walked out. I came back the next week to shop and saw my old co-workers they were annoyed thinking I'd no called no showed. It didn't surprise me that Land Whale had lied and didn't own up to her sheet leadership. I was working at a call center, inbound tech support for one of the satellite TV companies. The only way to contact an employee while they were on the clock was to call the dispatch desk and leave a message. My wife has some mental issues, which are usually managed just fine by her medications. But once in a while, something in her cocktail of happy pills doesn't quite work the way it should. This usually just results in something like a big mood swing or a manic episode, but this one day was a big exception. I'm a couple hours into my shift at work, just taking calls as usual, when someone from the dispatch desk walks by and sticks a post-it note on the wall of my cubicle. Nothing was said, nothing to get my attention, just reliant on my noticing it. All it says was that my wife had called. Not thinking much of it, I kept working until my break, then went to the payphone. The dispatch desk didn't let the rank and file use their phones to call back, and this was before cell phones. I call home, hi, honey, what's up? The carpet is full of snakes and they are trying to eat me. Don't move. I went to the dispatch desk and asked about the note. They had gotten a call from her, yes, around 15 minutes before they passed the note. She had told them it was an emergency, which is why they didn't wait for my break. The note didn't say it was an emergency. I told them that, yes indeed it was an emergency, and that I needed to go and take her to the hospital. Their response? No, get back on the phone. So I quit right there. Got a job at Costco, was told I'd be working produce making $18.75 an hour. I was pretty excited to start, because I always heard good things about working at Costco. I arrive on my first day of work and they said, sorry there was miscommunication. We filled the produce job. Only job we have open is cart pusher. You can go fill out your pay sheet again, by the way it's $12 an hour. Desperate for food on my plate I decided to take it. I was pissed, but had to eat. I put on my safety vest, hat and rope for the carts, and while I'm walking outside, I pass all these employees chatting away with each other, and shoppers and laughing in their air-conditioned work environment, then there is me, walking out in 105 degrees temps, mad that I can't enjoy the simple luxuries of Ack and an $18.75 slash H job. After about 4 hours of working outside I was told to go on lunch. The way Costco has their lunchroom set up they have you sitting. Facing this TV with all this Costco propaganda playing over the TV. As I sit there eating my PB&J sandwiches I began looking for new jobs on my phone. Boom. Lunch is over. I walk back out to the scorching heat with a slightly darker skin complexion with a slight bit of redness on my skin. As I'm walking out to a train length of carts I see one of my old cowalkers walking in to go shopping. Always a down to earth guy with a big heart. He tells me there is a dog locked in a car with no windows rolled down. I walk over to the car and sure enough there is a little corgi just panicking being in the heat. I go over to my supervisor and tell him of the incident. I ask if they can make an announcement over the PA system. Word for word he says, sorry, not our responsibility. Not going to do anything about it. I responded, if you're not going to do anything, I will. He said I would likely be let go if I did anything as it was a liability. Confused and heartbroken I called the police in the back of the lot. They came out and took care of the dog. As I continue my shift, I'm about 6 hours in of my 8 hour day. I see this small Asian woman struggling to get her groceries in the car. I gladly walk over and ask if she needed any help. 
She was so, so kind and she asked if I like my job, said I was a very pleasant and smart young man. I was very upfront with her about the job and told her what has happened. She informed me she is the owner of a medical supply company and if I was looking for a new job she could start me the next day with a pay of $20 slash H with bonuses based on performance. As a bonus, the facility had AC and was 10 minutes away from my house, compared to 25 minutes to Costco. I walked over to my supervisor, handed him everything on me that was Costco's property and told him Costco is a cult and they should never treat an employee the way I was treated on their first day. I worked for that medical company for two years. The entire staff was all family members and even grandma worked there. Every Friday, grandma would make an authentic Chinese buffet lunch and we would all have lunch together at their large conference room table. We all joked that I was their long lost American son. I still give my old boss a phone call every few weeks. Miss working there, but I now own and operate two businesses of my own. Know your self worth. The small company I worked for, 50 employees, was being purchased by a larger company. I had a few very minor issues with the new contracts, such as indefinite media usage of your photo slash lack of acknowledgement of my current benefits and continuation of them slash ignoring all my questions slash not responding to me for days at a time to said questions. Then, I'm sitting at my desk in an open space office where the dividing walls are like 4 feet, so if I perk my head up from my chair I can see all around the office. I hear the owner and CEO of the company talking to the hour lady at the coffee machine like 30 feet away. The CEO is complaining to ours about how difficult I'm being and calling me ridiculous. Our lady laughed and agreed, then went back to her meeting with the rep from the company that was buying us. I walked into her office, put my keys and key fob down, told her I heard what she and CEO said, told her I was packing my stuff and I would be gone by the end of the day. This was at like 5 p.m. on a Wednesday, nearly everybody was gone, they thought I was too. So our lady follows me around for nearly 40 minutes as I put all the company property I used every day away and collected all of my personal stuff from around the office. I was the it engineer, so I had multiple closets and storage areas to keep our equipment and that I worked in regularly, so I had personal stuff in there as well. As she followed me around she constantly talked about thinking it over until tomorrow. We will look at the contract. CEO and I didn't mean what we said. I had performed labor, personally, that saved this company hundreds of thousands of dollars in contractors fees over the three years I worked there. As extra to everything I did day to day for 725. Things that were not my job description. This was weekend and after hours work. But it was stuff I enjoyed, and I loved the company I worked for, so I did it at a fraction of the cost of hiring a third party company to do it. As I finished packing all my things, and cleaning my desk up, so it could easily be set up for a new person, the CEO himself came out. By this time it was only the three of us in the office. He repeated the same things our lady did, but never once did he apologize. I walked my things out the back door and loaded them up into my car, multiple trips since I practically lived at the office, started my car and drove off. Best feeling in the world. After I graduated from a medical assisting program in 2010, I was eager for my first job as a medical assistant. I interviewed at a local chiropractic office which wasn't exactly what I wanted, but I decided to give it a go. On my first day, I dozed off a bit during prayer circle before the day was getting started. The chiropractor saw me dozing off and asked me to stay behind as everyone else was dismissed to start the workday. He said he'd noticed I seemed rather sleepy during prayer circle and explained that the staff at this office all start the day with prayer every morning. He was annoyed, I apologized. The remainder of the day was this as whole chiropractor making me do demeaning things around the clinic. I was told to clean the bird sheet off of the outside of the windows, sweep the sidewalks, leaf blow the entrance, and I was handed a pair of scissors and ordered to trim the loose strands of carpet from everywhere in the office. I was already fed up. I knew what he was doing, but I tolerated those things. Until his last request of the day, I was instructed to go into one of the exam rooms, remove my clothes and cover myself with a thin gown, open to the back wearing nothing but bra and underwear. 
the chiropractor came in after a few minutes and said he had to check each new employee for scoliosis of the spine and asked me to bend over in front of him as far as I could when I felt his finger tracing my spine on my bare back. Cried the whole way home. Ghosted that job the next day. Never went back. My first work slash study job after I started college. Library job, subset of the general area specializing in environmental concerns or topics. Was just my supervisor and a rotating assistant of part-time work slash study students. Was just something part-time to cover expenses while doing school full-time. About three weeks into the job, she comes by the table I'm at, informs me you should know a comes before B in the alphabet. Okay. Sorry about that. Had no clue what had happened or brought that up. Five minutes later, comes near my desk looking for a book or article on the shelf next to me. Has trouble moving a stubborn chair. Offer to help. She then yanks the chair harshly, flinging it into the shelf on the other side of the room. Proceeds to call me stubborn and disrespectful, along with a mumble of I hire idiots to work with me. I quit right there. I put up with bad alcoholic parents, bullying in school. My first week's on my own, and I wasn't going to go through all of that anymore. Quit, got my last check from the front main desk of the library the next week. Had found out months later she had been doing the same to the other work slash study students. Turned out budget cuts were constantly brought up, among them, dissolving the specialized environmental research portion we worked in the library. She would remain calm and mature in meetings defending her position to remain in the library. But then all the bottled up rage at her bosses for trying to get rid of her position was taken out on us low work slash study students. The section and position were eventually permanently dissolved by the next school year. When I was 20 year old moved to a small town in New Brunswick for the summer. I'm French Canadian and the town I had moved in was mostly Anglophone. I was still struggling with English and had a very noticeable accent. When I applied for the job the description was very vague. I thought that it was fish feeding for a fish outfitter. One of the locals I had met told me a few of his friends had worked there in the past and the work was basically going around on a boat and feed some fish. Sounded like a pretty cool summer job. I met the general manager who was real nice, had a quick interview, and was hired on the spot. Asked me if I could start training right away. I said yes. Brings me down to the shop and I met the floor manager. First thing the guy noticed was my accent. Walked through the shop for me to meet everyone. He'd yell out to people. Hey here's our new worker for the summer. We'll call him Froggy for those who don't know. Froggy used to be a slang anglophones used to call French people. Didn't bother me that much at first and I tried to brush it off. Floor manager proceeds to show me what my tasks would be. Brings me in a big industrial freezer and says. Here Froggy, take a skid jigger and bring that skid of frozen herrings to the meat grinder at that point I'm a little bit confused. He then shows me how to take a pickaxe to break chunks off the skid of frozen fish. Then I had to toss chunks in an industrial size meat grinder. At that point I was pretty sure the job description was not what I thought it was. So I asked the guy, is this it or is this just prep before we go out and feed the fish? He starts laughing and he says no. That's it. That's your job for the summer. I walked right back upstairs to the general manager's office. I apologized and told him I will not be taking the job. He asked me why. I told him that I was unaware of what the work consisted of and that was my fault for not understanding the job description well enough. Explained to him I was only there for a few months and was looking for a more laid back summer job. He laughed and asked if there was anything else that bothered me. So I told him I've been called froggy about 15 to 20 times during my training. Turns out he was also French Canadian. Starts ranting about how his staff are idnecks and idiots. We have a good laugh about it. As I'm about to leave he says, don't forget. The idiot who called you froggy all day. He will be doing this shitty work all summer and it's been his job for a long time. I laughed and walked out. I worked for Washington Inventory Services and was a higher end auditor for the company and generally got paid very well. 
Things were a okay for the majority of my time working there, but our area manager took a contract for deployment to Afghanistan I think a bit over a year ago, so they brought in a brand new AM for the office, and while she learned the job, our regional oversaw a lot of things. The AM was a pretty nice lady and chill to work for during the initial weeks, but then she started catching sheet from the RM, like, getting blown out by the RM daily, so she started to run things like garbage and push us, like we weren't even humans. I as well as my now ex, were considered heavy hitters, and were constantly dragged to other jobs, after we completed our currents, so we'd work 14 hour days back to back, without days off. It took a major toll on our relationship, we both started developing a heavy amount of anxiety and depression. There were two times I walked away from this job. The first, I have asthma. I had requested numerous times to not schedule me in farming supply stores or home improvement stores. The amount of dust and allergens in these stores are too much for me to handle and I end up having asthma attacks. When these two idiots took over, I ended up getting them on my schedule again. When I confronted them about it, they stated I should have put in that I had these problems when I was hired which I did, and I also reiterated that I had these problems when they were brought it. Nonetheless, I bit the bullet and worked the job. I had an asthma attack, had to walk away and take medicine, and while I'm mid-treatment, the RM told me I was finished with the company if I didn't get back on the job. I got up, walked out, and had my girl at the time come grab me as I rode in with the entire crew on a company shuttle. Now, this company has two offices. A local office, four odd jobs, and a dedicated Walmart office for auditing Walmart. I'm friends with the AM for Walmarts, and I told him what had happened. He offered me a job with them and threatened my DM telling her that if she didn't unfire me, restore my pay rate, and transfer my records over to their office so I could retain my pay and work for them. They were going to drag their ass into corporate for attempting to force me to work that job with my medical reasons and get her terminated. She obliged happily. I worked on Walmarts for a few months and realized that the environment wasn't any different. I started to realize that the management team constantly sheet all over the rest of the time and didn't value us as actual human beings and treated us like property. I put my two weeks in and informed them I had to leave a job early before the two weeks went in as my girl's family at the time was going through it and I wanted to be there with them. It was a pretty serious issue, potentially life destroying, without really getting into it. When the date came, I handed in my stuff so I could take off early to be there for her that I already had approved and the DM ripped my equipment out of my hand, slammed it on the table and straight to my face. He was frustrated with the store, told me it was a mistake to hire me, despite my metrics and performance being in the top 10% of their entire 40-man team. I gave him a weird look and didn't finish out my two weeks. Got a text from him the next day asking if I was going to show up, and I just ignored it. Now I work for a company that ranks pretty high on America's best companies to work for metric and my work life couldn't be more relaxing. Fack inventory jobs. I got hired to work at a bakery to do business development type stuff. Turns out what they wanted was for me to work in the kitchen 8 to 10 hours a day and do BD in my free time. I didn't want to starve to death, so I tried for a while. It wasn't long before I ended up in the air. The exhaustion and stress had caused my immune system to completely fold. I got prescribed heavy duty antibiotics, painkillers, and a week's bed rest. Owner is pissed but capitulates. Tried to make me make calls while I'm out sick, but I'm too looped on the painkillers. First day back at work, the owner gives me a list of what I need to do, says I can't leave until it's done, and walks out 16 hours later, I clock out and head back to the ER. This time, the doc says two more days off should be all I need, adjusts my meds, back at work again. I'm feeling better, but still on antibiotics, which give me real funky smelling sweats, but what can you do? So it's hot in the kitchen, I start to get sweaty. Owner starts doing that awful exaggerated sniffing thing that middle schoolers do when someone fetches. After 5 minutes or so of this, she pulls me into the pantry for a private talk. Huh, have you showered recently? Me, yeah. And I just did laundry. Huh, are you sure? 
me, yes, very sure. Huh, well, I'm going to need you to drive home to shower and change, and then come back. It was about 15 miles each way. So I turned and walked out, dropped my keys by the front door, and blocked her number. Went back to bed for a week, then got a job as a server. TLDR. Boss installed hidden camera in female change rooms which I found before he tried to fight me over it in front of the shop while drunk on I. 17 years old and working in an ice cream store as one of only 4 males in a near 30 strong team. Male boss used us as cheap security to work nights with minimal staff so the girls would feel safer rather than putting on more staff for the night or even security itself. We were treated like sheet cause the owner were so focused on the pretty ice cream girls. All my shifts were late nights and in places near bars where drunk patrons would hassle the girls often, putting us in cheaty situations trying to get them to leave peacefully. The guys I worked with were all in high school, so never old enough to handle these scenarios. My boss always pushed aside our feedback about being abused by drunks and assholes when trying to keep the girls from being excessively harassed. After handling a long night shift that finished at 1pm for me, but 11pm for the girls, I changed out the back in the female change rooms as the boss had filled the male one up with extra holiday stock. I quickly left to meet up with friends for what was left of New Year's Eve, in my haste, realized I didn't put the alarm on. Went back to the shop, about 8 minutes elapsed, and opened it up again, and the phone started ringing, it was the boss who immediately yelled what the hell are you still doing there, and how come I was in the girls change rooms earlier. He was slurring, and was clearly hammered. I told him the men's room was full of boxes, and that we've all been using that room all week, when he suddenly hung up. As I shrugged it off, and started to activate the alarm, it didn't sit right with me, that he was giving me a hard time about changing in the girls room, especially when I was the only person on shift for 8 hours. Why would it matter? So I stop the alarm, look through the shop, and sure enough the dirty prick has a camera trained on the girl's change room, not a security kind. A cleverly hidden little camera in a folder no one touched, as it was attached to the wall. So I got up on a step ladder, and pulled it out, including the cords, that came with it. I felt a massive rush, and started to get out of there. After setting the alarm, closing the doors, and straddling my bike, the boss comes screeching into the car park in his BMW, past hundreds of people in adjacent nightclubs and pubs, and comes to a dramatic halt in front of me, on my bike, about to leave work with a backpack of his camera gear in it. I was sheeting myself. By this time my friends had wondered where I was and were walking towards me, when he pulled up, then leaps out of the car and starts screaming at me to give his camera back, or he'll beat the sheet out of me. While he's stumbling towards me spitting and screaming I notice there's a lot of people watching. Q bounces. He tries to get at me, but is too drunk, and loses his balance and falls to the ground. He's screaming at me like a madman and the security guards intervene. He resists and starts calling them for everything, they subdue him, and call the police. My friends are so bemused, while I have a statement taken, and we watched on as he was put on the breathalyzer, done for resisting arrest and eventually taken away for a string of offenders. I got to tell my full story for which everything unfolded over the next few hours, that ran into weeks. I even had to make witness statements in court etc. He eventually had to pay out damages to dozens of girls and their families, plus lost his three stores, wife, and kids etc. Went to jail for 4 years, of which he served only 2. I never got a cent, but was happy to be at the center of his demise. Working at a chain bridal salon, my first day of outdated systems. In addition to that scheduled me during my class time, and when I said I wasn't available. Then getting my SSN yelled across the room by an incompetent manager. Not given a break, even though I was there over 8 hours, their excuse was, because they were training me. The last straw was, when they refused to let me fit someone for a bra for their gown. This individual was trans, and she didn't know what type of bra as she had only worn sports bras after her top surgery. I was skilled as being a bra fitter for 5 years. I was hired for this as the hiring manager was delighted that I could fit people. My boss stamped up to me saying I was being somehow inappropriate and that someone like her should go elsewhere. 
I was furious, and with her nastiness towards a plus-sized bride, the dressing room next to us, she had told the poor girl that her figure was too fat for the dress she loved, and to go to the thrift store. This was within earshot, and shortly before she clomped over to me was too much. I was also hungry and thirsty from being 10 hours on my feet no break. I walked out, I didn't stay to close or anything, I called said I was resigning for good. This will probably be buried deep, but I walked out of my job at a deli in a supermarket after 2 years cause I shat my pants when they wouldn't let me go to the bathroom. I have pain for lives and had several doctor's notes stating I needed longer and more bathroom breaks than usual. For those 2 years I worked there, it always caused problems, but the new assistant manager didn't care about the doctor's notes at all. It was a slow day and there were way more than enough employees to take a costumer if one came. I kept begging him to let me go, literally begging. When I get a flare up, I have to get to a bathroom as soon as possible or there will be dire, rear, consequences. He never told me I could go, but I just ran. I made it to the door of the employee bathroom before I couldn't hold it anymore. I waddled into the bathroom, sat on the toilet crying and cleaned myself. I washed my underwear, thank god it barely got on my pants, in the sink thoroughly, put it in a plastic bag. Took the walk of shame out that front door and I never went back. Now I can't get a job and haven't worked since I walked out in 2014 cause my ibs just keeps getting worse and I have to tell any and all employers that I need more bathroom breaks and they always ghost me. I've been trying to get on disability benefits these last 7 years without any luck at all. I swear, my stress, anxiety, depression, and panic attacks make my ibs borderline Crohn's disease. A coworker and I were given one of the company's largest accounts and told to take care of it. This usually for a job of 5 to 6 people. We would stay after hours, so we wouldn't fall behind. Inevitably we did fall behind, and we told our managers that we need more people on our team, and they said it just wasn't possible. Instead of hiring other people to do a team's job they talked 2 hours, so ours could monitor our work habits, so we could work more efficiently. When that didn't work they pulled people from other teams to help us get caught up, and after those people went back to their own teams we fell behind again. This cycle continued until they decided to finally hire more people, only to put those people into other teams and leave us on our own again. Managers would have talks with us about how management was going down on them because we were falling behind. The last straw was when they forced us to go back to the office during the pandemic because they wanted us to and not because our job actually required it. They were even forcing my pregnant coworker to go back even as cases were starting to rise. I put in my two weeks after that, luckily found a job in my actual field with much higher pay and bosses that actually care about me as a person and not just a worker. My mental health improved significantly since then too. Since I was suicidal during that period of my life, I have never looked back. I'm 16. First job, stoker at baby's risk manager calls me up front and tells me they need me to go clean the women's bathroom. Okay, NBD. I walk into that room and it looked like someone attempted to embody the soul of Dali and Picasso at the same time. With their sheet. I'm talking wall to wall, like, who has that much to even defecate? Needless to say I noped right the fuck out, walked up front, and you need to call the HEC, CDC, OSHA, someone I jaff but whoever cleans, that room needs a hazmat suit, well, it's that or your job. HMM. $6.50 ah, what would you do? You could see it in their eyes, ain't no way in hell, like we said. You said bye, that's what I heard, By they then looked over at my friend who I got the job and he laughed with the biggest cackle as he followed me out. One other person followed suit before we drove off. Straight trippin. I was part of the opening team in a restaurant. I got hired as a bidder because I didn't have a lot of experience to put on a resume. But everyone had to go through a month long menu training program before they opened the location. I'm a good student who's really interested in food and cooking topics. So I learned everything I could about the menu. And on the final menu test, I got a 100. The management quickly bumped me up to a food runner, where that knowledge could get used. 
and I was told from then on that I'd be a great server one day. So I took that to heart. Worked there for two years. Sent to every new menu class, every wine tasting, etc. I took detailed notes on everything. I knew that restaurant backwards and forwards. When the managers learned I'd compiled a notebook of class materials, they even asked to copy it for their own training materials. But after a year and a half of this, it was starting to get stale. They kept saying I'd be a good server, but whenever I asked about moving up they'd say it couldn't happen. And the lazier servers on the team had been leaning on me to supplement their work. When dishes that were more complex came to the table, they'd suddenly disappear, leaving me to talk about the food for them. And in this time they hired new servers from outside, guess who trained them? Finally, management announced that, after two years, they'd start promoting some good runners who showed aptitude. I was ecstatic. Everyone knew this was my moment I went through all the training shifts, worked relief shifts as a server, did everything I could to show I was ready. They didn't promote me. They chose another guy, who showed up a year after me, who I had trained. Started looking for work that day, and left by the end of the week. Back in about 06, I worked a couple fast food jobs. One I started first, the second was to fill hours, that the first job couldn't. This was clarified in my interview, my initial scheduling, and with the franchise owner and the store manager when I started. The night shift manager apparently had favorites, so when I started on drive through previous experience, they moved me to front counter, and then changed my hours to fit their schedule, which was specifically moved to the days I had blocked out as no go. I requested a quick meeting to discuss it, assuming they didn't know about the previously settled availability. They opened with you don't decide when I have you work. I own you, so you'll work when I tell you to work. I asked them to clarify what they said, they repeated the same statement with more attitude and a sneer. So I stood up, grabbed a napkin and put as of that day's date, I quit and signed slash dated it. Telling the other worker on front end I just quit, let, store manager, know that I'll be back in a few days, to drop off my uniform and discuss why. And walked out with the shift manager trying to yell at me the whole time, saying you'll never work in this town again and such. I worked there all of two days, increased my hours at my other job, then got a different second job. I had been hired onto a job that was supposed to be a flexible schedule. After two weeks training was done, and I asked if I could shift my schedule by half an hour so I could put my son on the bus in the mornings. I would still be working well within office hours. I was told no. After a few more days I realized, because I was told no things had worked out, him, perfectly where I hadn't seen my son in two weeks, and I was paying childcare I couldn't afford to get him onto the bus and off of it daily. Without the half hour shift in schedule and my husband's work schedule, it just wasn't working out. So I went to tell my two trainers that I was going to have to quit if I couldn't get the shift in schedule. I was very polite, I was not laying out an ultimatum. The trainer I spoke to was not the one who turned me down the first time, and she was shocked to hear I was turned down and immediately asked who told me no. I told her it was the other trainer. As I told her this, the other trainer walked up and overheard. He immediately got defensive. Note, neither her nor I were upset, it was all just a civil convo, and he started shouting over our conversation. He was calling me names, making accusations. I just stood there wide-eyed in shock, myself and the other trainer just exchanged this same look of shock, while this guy went off. It clicked in my head right then. This job was almost all women, this guy was one of maybe three men who worked there, and every single person there adored him. It was like he walked on water. I knew in that instant I had made an enemy and I knew it wasn't going to end well for me. I just shook my head, looked at the female trainer and said, this doesn't work for me. I quit. They both went silent as I walked away, packed up the things I had in my cubicle, it wasn't much yet of course, turned in my badge at the front desk and walked out. First time I had ever walked out on a job with no warning. I don't regret it. Oh I finally have a good story. So I used to be a cook at a relatively small bar. In the kitchen, most weeknights would just be one person cooking and somebody doing dishes, who would also sometimes help out with the fryers. Usually two cooks and a dishwasher on weekends. 
well I'm scheduled to work one night, and about a half hour before my shift, the dishwasher texts me to let me know he's calling off and already let the owner know. I thought, no big deal, usually pretty slow on Tuesdays, or whatever weekday it was. It didn't hit me, until I got to work, that it was opening day for baseball. Slammed from the minute I walked in. I finally get a second, after about 30 minutes and text the owner asking if he had somebody else coming in to help, to which he responded, stop complaining to me, if this job is too hard for you to handle just leave. So I texted him back I was just asking, no reason to get mad let me take a second to also explain that my boss, the owner, was a total faking drunk as whole 100% of the time, so I was pretty used to this behavior. However, the story continues I don't end up getting any help in the kitchen, and I experience one of the busiest shifts of my life on my own. Dishes pile into the ceiling, just an absolute mess. After a few hours, things finally calm down, and I start to chip away at those dishes, when boss man pulls up in the parking lot with a party bus full of other drank assholes coming back from the opening day game downtown. He immediately walks in the kitchen drunk as hell and starts screaming in my face about how I can't talk to him like that, like what, literal spit hitting my face. I started calmly untying my apron and just laughing, because in my head, I'm thinking you need to walk out right this second or this old man is going to get knocked the fuck out. I threw the apron at his face, grabbed my things off the shelf all, while he continued to follow at me, and scream all the way through the back door, and out into the parking lot. I never felt more content with quitting a job. I worked in a foundry for 7 years. My job was to take care of the jet melting furnaces. I had to melt the aluminum and steel, make sure it was the correct temperature 1500, 1700 degrees, clean the furnaces daily, test the quality of metal, and then deliver the molten metal via forklift to die casting machines. The job was dangerous, technical and downright hot. Year around it was 120 degrees, the company had just hired a new die casting manager and this guy didn't know anything about what we did. He decided to have a meeting with everyone in the shop. He said he wanted to learn the process and then proceeded to tell us what we were doing wrong. I immediately stepped forward and began to ask him questions because things would get more dangerous if we were to start doing things his way. He didn't like this one bit. His next words went something like this. I don't pay you for your knowledge, I pay you, because the job is hot. I then took off every bit of PPE tossed it to the ground at his feet, walked directly up to him, and flipped him off. Then walked out. One month later I got a call from the company asking me if I would come back. Evidently over half of the other workers at that meeting had followed my lead and left. The manager had gotten fired. My nanny boss was angry at me for yelling at her kid. He'd been screaming in my car over 10 minutes. We are talking ear piercing. My grandpa had just been diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer and I was stressed. While that doesn't excuse the yelling, it does explain it. However, over the phone, her response was, well, I'm sorry about your grandpa, but that's not my concern. While with my child your only concern should be him. Gave her a week's notice, she said I owed her too. I told her she owed me 30 plus HRS a week and she hadn't given me that in over 2 months. She immediately shut up, because I had a time log of all my hours in the 1 year of hell I put up with them. One week later, my last day included dropping the brat off at preschool then dropping the car seat back off at their house. She asked if I would stay another week, and I told her no. Then I headed to my grandpa's wake from their house. Fuck her. Be kind to your nanny. I was falsely accused of sexual harassment by a female colleague that had previously been moved away from me for unwanted attention, flirting, and constantly talking about how much she hated her husband. The place was a bank, so they had cameras literally everywhere. She claimed it happened in a break room on a side of the building I didn't even work on. I never even went to that break room after my initial training period and this was at least 6 months later. I had them check the security tapes of that day and a few days later they determined that I hadn't been anywhere near her that entire day, nor any day around that time. They didn't fire her for making a false claim. 
they didn't make any more of an effort than to have a generic meeting on office rumors shouldn't be spread because she was trying to tell everyone and their mother that would listen right around the start of hash METOO, so that was basically everyone and they did nothing when the guy she had began dating in the office came to my desk while I was working and put his hands on me and threatened me. I quit the next day and did so by calling out until my two weeks of paid time off was exhausted. So I got one last paycheck while I looked for another job. This will get buried since there's 10k comments in this thread, but it's funny timing since I literally quit a job barely after a week two days ago. For context, I graduated college about six months ago. I need to go to grad school to really get into my field, so I've been in the job hunt for a bit, but to no avail. So I decided to go back to my part-time roots and find a kitchen job that I've done for 8 years throughout high school and college. Found a place with really good reviews and paid decently, got called in for a working interview. I wanted to do prep work and some cooking. Worked 4 hours doing some prep work, they hire me, and then scheduled a quick orientation at the end of the week. Literally a day later, and 4 days before my scheduled orientation, I get called in, because someone called out. Now I've had zero training or any concept of the place besides a working interview, but I've been around kitchens a long time, so it wasn't bad. I go in and instantly get a red alarm. They said nonchalantly that they the dishwashers were out and I'd be doing more dishwashing than prep slash cooking. I work my shift and it say but it's money. For the next 3 days, they texted me about an hour before the shift started asking me to come in and I work those shifts. Dishwashing annoyed, but it's money. I have my orientation the next day, then a weekend break, and go in for my first scheduled shift up training what the fuck has my impromptu shifts been then. I think cool, I get to do prep work and cook finally. Nope. Turns out a dishwasher left, the other cut off part of his finger, and I'll only be dishwashing. Keep in mind, since there is only one dishwasher, which is me, the brand new hire that taught himself about the whole place, means that all the dishes were being piled from the afternoon and left to the cooks to keep track of it. So basically mountain high dishes. Filled with rage I worked the shift and ended up leaving 2 hours later than I should. Next day, I pull up to a shift, same exact situation, and it turns out finger dude will be gone longer than expected, so it'll be like this every day. Told my boss that this is unfair and won't work out for me and promptly dipped. Best of luck to them having literally zero dishwashers. I was director of mall security in 2016. I'm sure many of you recall the mall riots on 12 over 26 of that year, my mall was one of them. I spent the entire next year asking my company, security contractor, and the client, the company that actually owned the mall, for juvenile curfews, increased police presence, etc. point to try to stop it from happening again. Every time, I was shut down, because it would cost too much money. Because profits over people, always. Security director was the worst job I've ever had. Money was okay, but it was salary and holy hell was that taken advantage of. I was expected to take phone calls and or respond to them all the 24th of July 365 even while on vacation. There were two separate four week stretches where I had to go to the faking mall over something, even though my days off were allegedly Sunday slash Monday. Fast forward to November 2017 and the Monday before Thanksgiving. Specifically, I had just finished the second four week stretch I mentioned above and was taking this day off before the hell that is the mall holiday season until my boss calls me and says my company wants a conference call to discuss my plans for the holiday season. I tell my boss I'm not going in the office but I'll take the call. I take the call and it's my boss, two VPs, the CEO and all the area security directors. After 15 minutes of being chastised for the riot the year prior, I remind the CEO that 1. I was promoted less than a month before the riot, so I had nothing to do with the planning leading up to it 2. I've been asking for help for the last year and was met with resistance from everyone. I was again ignored. The CEO asks me for the schedule for the week of Thanksgiving. I tell him I don't have it since I'm at home. I explain that Mondays are my day off. But that wasn't good enough for him, and he orders me into the office. I tell them give me 10 minutes and I'll be in. 
My wife heard the whole thing. She says, I'm not telling you to quit, but here's two empty boxes. When I arrived at my office 11 minutes later, the CEO calls me and asks if I'm in my office. They need to review the schedule. My mall needs dire help. Blah blah blah. I say Chris, I'm in my office. But I'm cleaning it out since I quit. Happy holidays. And hung up the phone. It was the first time in 5 years I got to spend the holidays with my family. No regrets. I worked at a farmer's market in high school. It was under the table. I would show up around 3.30 a.m. every Saturday, load the truck, drive to market, set up, sell under the hot sun, drive the truck back, unload, count money, go home. It was over 12 hours every Saturday. I couldn't do fun things Friday night or Saturday night. This job ate my weekends. I got $60 a time. This was in 2010. The older farmer couple would show up and sit in camping chairs and watch us, me and another high school kid, work. We did everything. They wouldn't let us find shade or drink water. I worked so hard and gave up my entire weekends as a 16 year old. The farmer couple were never kind. The lady was a little bit losing it mentally with age, and as time went on she got meaner. One day, in the middle of market, she exploded on me, saying things like, I don't know why we even pay you to just do nothing despite the fact that they paid me less than $5 an hour and I literally did everything. I finished my work that day, collected my pay, and never answered their calls or texts again. They got increasingly desperate on the voice emails they would leave, since they physically could not sell at market without me, but I just literally never replied or answered again fact that. The day I stopped working in call centers. TLDR at bottom I have worked in many call centers over my life, and having found this sub I will likely add more in the future, but I thought I'd start with the why I left the industry for good. Like I said I have a lot of experience in this area, and when I moved towns I needed a new job and a fast decent income, so I applied for multiple telesales roles very quickly, and by the end of the week I was sat in training, having been interviewed at a solicitor's by two very posh well-spoken gentlemen in an amazing office, we had discussed, and amazing package including a company car for, when I did face-to-face -face sales and career progression and around. Three times industry standard wage. I was over the moon and attended the posh office with the posh cars and all the fancy people and I used what little money I had to buy a second hand suit and attack my new job with vigor. The training week was brilliant and I was paid around £900 English pounds sterling. I was 22 and couldn't actually believe it. That was without commission. My second week and I'm on the phones, I have been pulled up a couple of times for going into a sales pitch and off script, and told they don't run a telesales office like that. That they are above board everything is legal and everyone is looked after. So I stuck to the script made a few sales, I was adamant I could have made more with some freedom, but I stuck to doing as I was told. Second week I make around £1,500 and the third around £2,200. All above board and legitimate, it's advertising for businesses, and if they all signed contracts after my call I got an extra bonus when the face to face guys went out. These contracts ran up to 7 years, and were owed by the solicitor guys I mentioned earlier, essentially unbreakable or get out able. I was young, naive and making more money than I knew what to do with. I was still getting pulled up on the odd call for making a joke or having personality, but life was good. Then it came to renew a contract with a company. I got past this surefire deal and was told to make the arrangements. The gentleman was known to be a tough negotiator, so the commission wouldn't be a huge percent, but he spent a small fortune every two years. The minimum term contract, I rang and a lady answered who turned out to be his wife. It went something like this, about 5 minutes into the convo explaining who I'm the lady starts to cry. Sorry my husband has passed away from cancer. I have never worked, and I'm going to sell the business and retire with the grandkids. She cries some more, and says she's terminal as well, and doesn't know what else to do. We have some more sorry for your loss type conversation, and I let her go. So I compose myself, and get ready to make the next calls. Now remember I kept getting pulled for off script. I was screamed at. I broke the script one too many times, and how dare I console this lady. 
The floor manager then said the most callous thing I have ever heard. Listen if she dies on a 7 year contract we get the money paid in full before her family get inheritance now I don't know how true that is. But I feel sick. And being a bigger lad all I can think about is smashing this bloke's face in. As if he had said this heinous thing about my own nana. I don't though as I need the job. So I walk out to get a drink. Compose myself a second time. And as I walk back in. Floor manager is high-fiving the staff saying that 7 years ready to be signed at our top package. For advertising for a company a lady was selling while she was dying and bereaved. I was disgusted. I decided to quit but first things first I rang my mum. She is a cancer survivor and runs a company. She knows how to win. She tells me what to do. I wait the day out. I make more sales than I ever have. I stay late that night. Everyone leaves the office hiring every customer back. I tell them the truth every customer cancelled and put complaints into the relevant ombudsmans. I left really happy with my notice on the desk. That first morning the calls came. First sorry to see you go, but we didn't need you call key calls. Then the what the fuck have you done calls. Then the threatening to sue me calls then the please ring them back begging calls. I collected my last wage a week later. Heavily docked but very happy. I haven't been back in a call center since, and I don't intend to. TLDR call center tries to rip off dying woman, I stop it, and leave the industry forever. I worked at a store called Tuesday morning. Worked the night shift almost every night and occasionally helped with unloading the truck. We just so happened to get a truck full of new items every Tuesday morning. Basically every time the truck came I had to wake up at 5.30 and meet the manager in the back of the store and help unload the truck. It was pretty much only me and her for 3 years doing the truck and around 7 every day a third girl would come in. Around halfway through the second year we beefed up the staff and our store was now in its prime. This is when I became the primary truck helper guy who helped the manager as well as the go to I know you have off today but we need some help could you come in guy. I was incredibly reliable. Then one day, towards the end of the third year, my secondary manager got promoted to his own store and left ours. Then my one cow who I became friends told a lady that she was very unpleasant and that he felt bad for anyone who had to deal with her, which resulted in him getting fired. Then corporate thought it was a good idea to change the way the truck unloading was done. Instead of just letting us unload the boxes from the truck, stack them and then open them all once the truck left, we now had to open the boxes as they came off the truck which was incredibly anti-productive and frustrating as it caused a massive mess and pissed everyone off. So my main manager got fed up with that and quit. Then my main manager's friend who was one of the key holders quit. Then the most recent girl we hired quit. So no it was down to me and a call in manager every Tuesday at 5.30am for the new truck. These were under managers from other stores. Basically any manager that could cover our store's shift that day. Well one Tuesday I forgot that I had to be up at 5.30 to do the truck and didn't set an alarm. And just slept away like a baby while the manager was trying to call me. Woke up an hour late panicked, listened to the manager's voice a mail, and then just said fuck this, and went back to sleep. I worked at Burger King for about a year, and I worked my ass off at the place, since I was trying to work my way up, to being a shift lead. I was promised a promotion after 4 months of being there, they said they needed someone with my attitude, to be a better face of the store than some of the others we had. I learned everything I could for that position, and was constantly keeping an update with the GM and the AM. Well, GM wanted her teenage kid to be a shift lead as well, and there was only one opening so of course he got it, which didn't bug me at all, I get it. But I'm not gonna keep doing extra work if I'm not gonna be getting the upgrade or a raise. She wanted me to keep doing shift lead stuff, but for minimum wage, and I said no. She then proceeded to schedule me too close, 11pm, and open, 5am, 3pm back to back in that order for every week I worked. I put up with this for a few months, up until one day I hadn't long shift, I had been on the clock for like 6 hours and she refused to let me take even a smoke break despite herself, and literally everyone else getting their lunch break. After that day, I proceeded to get a new job almost immediately doing construction, but I had to wait a week to start. 
So I called off the next day and used all 7 paid sick days I had built up, went over to Cali with my now wife, and when we got back I called less than 30 minutes before I was supposed to start and told her I resigned my position and I'm not coming back. She told me I could never work at that Burger King again and that made me happy fuck you, Mirian. Horrible management. I'd been working as a waiter at a restaurant, it was a nice place, but there was a bit of an air of snobbery between the wait staff and the management staff. On that particular day we were short staffed, so we all had to put a little extra weight. The manager on duty was a whinge of a man who liked to boss people around to feel important. I mostly ignored him and did my job. Then I mucked up an order, no big deal, it happens. But because manager man was on duty, he pulled me out of a busy service to have a long talk with me and remind what my duties as a waiter are. I'd been waiting for a good 5 years by that point. All the time I'm thinking, dude, there are tables that need to get served, my food is getting cold, and you want to play manager now? You should be doing this after the damned service. Reprimand me, of course, but don't be an idiot about it. I get back on the floor. My tables are a little cranky, but I quickly get their food out. Manager man comes up to me and tells me to fill up the bar. I ask him if he's serious, we are short staffed. He says, do as I say. Fine, whatever. I do the bar, in between juggling my tables which has just hit the lunch hour, and we are still short staffed. Two waiters for a busty restaurant, doable, if the manager isn't an idiot. At some point I get mixed up between doing the bar and when my order was set to go out, which, if you're short staffed, should be the manager's job. To manage the floor and help the waiters. It ends up getting cold on the hot plate. The meat is dried out from standing so long. I ask the kitchen to make two more and go outside to explain to my customers what just happened. They're fine with it. I turn to head back inside, and manager man comes right at me, and dresses me down in front of the customers. He tells me I need to get my head out of my ass, that I've been screwing up the whole day, and that I'm useless faking waiter. Keeping a lid on my temper, I do have a bit of a short fuse, I turn around, and head back to the bar, to finish up my duties. I'm halfway done, when he comes back, and yells at me again for wasting time sitting behind the bar when there are people to be served, then, you shouldn't even be working here. I said, don't worry, I'm leaving. I get up and walk out. He follows. You have to sign a paper of resignation. He's panicking, they still have about 5 hours left of full service and the faker will actually have to work, if I'm not there. I said, give it to me, and then I can leave. After some hesitation he gives it to me, I sign it with absolute joy, and he asks me are you absolutely sure about this? I finally blow my fuse, I tell him what a faking useless manager he is, how stupid he is, how much better he could have handled this situation, if he'd been willing to get off his ass and help on the faking floor. I turn around and walk out, I've never been happier in my life than on that moment. I had been working only a month. It was a total of maybe 4 to 5 hours of work 3 to 4 days a week. Counting cash for the bank truck and tracking employee hours. It was a pretty easy job. I lived in another state than my family. I got a call on my way home from work that my dad had a massive heart attack. I made it home to my husband who immediately booked me a flight for the next morning. It was the soonest available. I tried calling to let the manager know and no response. So I had hubby drive me about an hour after I got the news. I walked in to let them know. By that time I had been informed my dad was being put into a medically induced coma. When I told my manager, who was unavailable because he was on a cigar break, what was up, and that I was flying the next morning he acted all supportive. Yeah. Go be with your family. You're not on the schedule for another three days anyway. When I told him I wasn't sure how long I'd be gone he again stated I was working in 3 days. I told him that's nice. Mail my last check. My dad was in that coma for 3 damn weeks. He's better now though. Hates all the damn meds he has to take. Worked at a Roberta place for 2 days while I waited for an interview for a job that I already had, formalities, but hadn't stared yet. 
I was super faking desperate for work as I'd been without work for 6 months and my unemployment was about to run out and I needed something to fill the 2 week gap of no money. I was also about to start school in a few months at the local beauty school, so it wasn't supposed to be a long term job anyway. So my second day working they had me in the fries for my whole shift. Super faking monotonous. Stupidly run timing wise, so that everyone has fresh fries, and extra at the bottom of the bag. When we closed I thought cool I'll probably clean the lobby, and take out the trash and maybe shadow the crew, to see how the grill line is cleaned and closed for a bit, before I home no. I was told to empty the fryer oil and deep clean the fry hopper get the grill cleaned. Basically close the entire line by myself. No direction. No one to show me how to do it. Nothing. This wasn't my first job in the food industry, but it was my first time as back of house. I was completely green in the kitchen. Whatever. I wasn't some teenager with their first job. I was in my mid-twenties. A seasoned worker and a hard worker at that. I figured it out. Pestered whoever was nearby that would give me half a second of acknowledgement any time I couldn't figure out what to do, and just got through it. Everyone is busy cleaning their own stuff, and it took a ridiculous amount of time. The shift lead was blaring EDM over the system, and as someone who has some sensory issues it was quite literally driving me insane. I went to get a glass of water, and realized it was close to 1.30am. I was scheduled to be off at 11pm, and I had to be back at 9am for opening. What the fuck? I walked over to the shift lead, told her what I had just realized, and told her I was leaving for the night. When I went to clock out I realized that I had already been clocked out at 11.03pm. I was furious, but I quietly took a picture with all the timestamps I needed visible, didn't say anything, or acknowledge that I noticed that time theft, while the shift lead stood in the kitchen watching me leave. I got home around 2am, and got into my shower, because there was no way I was getting into bed covered in fry grease, and smelling like stale peanut oil. After having a mental breakdown in the shower, and letting the hot water rinse the snot from my ugly crying down the drain. I dried off, got into something clean that smelled like springtime meadows, and crawled into bed crying and begging my husband to not make me go back. We had both agreed for financial reasons to just do the job for a month and then leave once my other job had given me my first paycheck. Slight overlap of jobs, but needed to make ends meet. In the morning, after sleeping in until 11am and ignoring the 7 missed calls, I contacted my local labor office and filed a complaint for the time theft among other things this company had faked up in just the 2 days I worked there. I ended up with an ok settlement. Way more than the $30 that this chain owed me. Enough to pay for beauty school and a decent pre-owned Nissan. I've never eaten at any of their locations since. It's been 5 years and I hold a huge grudge against those guys. It wasn't me, but you all will like this. I was the manager at a sandwich shop in college that was kinda weed themed and it would be no big deal to have gauges or tats or dreads or pink fucking hair or piercings or anything in our client size. So I hired this dude that was covered in tats cause he had the following. Experience working in a sandwich shop. He blazed. He was super cool and friendly and good looking and I knew he would be a bang with the customers. He lived 3 minutes away and he was down to work 30 hours a week, no benefits, at like $9 an hour. That's all I needed to hear, and I put my foot down, and told the owner he is hired. First day on the job he pays for an energy drink on his break and walks into the parking garage to smoke a cig, and eat a sandwich. The owner blows the fuck up, and accuses him of stealing it. They start arguing, I hear it, and come out, and say I just faking watched him pay for that utard. Dude doesn't give a sheet. Slams the energy drink on the ground and tosses the sandwich on the owner's shoes and walks out. I texted him saying I was sorry and tried to make it right like 15 minutes later. After beaching to the owner and he just texted me back saying. All good man. Yeah you'll chill but that guy's a prick. I just suck my dick in his jeep's gas tank and took a huge leak. Don't tell him. My first job was Subway at 14. It was a franchise and the store owner paid me under the table for 2 years. I worked 30 to 40 hour weeks, had a store key, and ended up closing most nights. I was never late, worked miles off, never called out. 
I'm 16, legit on the books now, still working miles off. I got sick on my day off and called out the following day, I even found someone to cover my shift. I returned to work the store manager cut my hours to 6 hours over the following week. 2, 3 hour shifts, on 2 separate days. What am I told when I question this? This is your punishment for calling out. Ok beach. My next shift was 7pm 10 my up I was expected to close still. So 9.30 rolls around, I look at the guy I'm closing with and say I'm quitting tonight, I'm not doing any of the cleaning or anything, then told him my story. His response was let's fuck this place up together. Make us a couple of subs, I'll go get some beer and we can get drunk in the park across the street 16 year old me learned what a hangover was in first period English, and that guy was a G for quitting with me. The sheer panic and stress in the store manager's voice when she left me a voice email next day was so worth it. Was working at Best Buy while attending university for a Match England degree this was a month into the term and I had given them my schedule the day I had gotten it. I get about a dozen calls on my heaviest day, start at 8am finish at 10pm with one hour long break at about 1.30 as I'm in a lecture. I step out to take the last one and they tell me they desperately need me to act as the manager for the afternoon and evening in the TV section. I told them I couldn't as one I was in classes and management promised it would never interfere with my classes and the rest of my afternoon were labs, that I would fail the course if I didn't attend to I was a jeek squad agent with no experience in that department or management experience and 3 I was already told I might have to give up my closing shift on Saturday because I had already pulled 15 hours up because of short staffing in GS and there wasn't going to be room to pay me for another full shift. They responded with they didn't care I had to head up, and if I didn't I might as well not show up Saturday or any other shift scheduled next week as I wouldn't have had a job. Yeah told them instantly called up my actual manager, and told him I was sorry, but I was threatened with termination, and even if it was overturned I wouldn't be back. Not my story but my husband's. He worked for his dad for a couple years in construction. He worked his way from the field into the office to become an estimator, as him and his brother were supposed to take over the company. To preface this, my husband's dad is a narcissistic and controlling. He mentally abused my husband throughout his entire childhood, and when my husband was a teenager physically abused him. Day one of my husband in the office he tells him we have a really great vibe here, don't mess it up. My husband was treated horribly was yelled at constantly by their job site foreman for doing his job, did the other estimators work, and got zero credit for it. He dealt with this for two years. Then his dad decided that my husband's cousin's wife would be the perfect person to take over the company's our debt. We will call her Karen. My bill was currently the one who handled all of that, so he trained Karen on all the hour stuff. She made it blatantly obvious that she didn't care about the job or need the job. The money was strictly her play money. Fast forward a year and my bill is still basically doing the hour job while trying to learn to be an estimator like my husband. Well apparently my husband's dad thought Karen deserved a raise. So he started paying her $24 an hour for 40 hours a week when she didn't know the job and when she only worked 36 hours a week. My husband's dad said she was bad with her money and she brought a really good vibe to the office and that's why she got the raise. My husband was devastated because he has tried his entire life to make his dad happy and proud of him. He felt like his dad didn't seem him as worth more than Karen. My husband went in the following week and asked for a raise he was making $22 an hour and his dad said absolutely not I'm not giving you a raise. So he shook his dad's hand said thank you for the opportunity and quit. He hasn't talked to his dad since. My bill is on his way out now too. TLDR. Husband's dad was a dick who didn't appreciate all the hard work and dedication so he quit. So people are giving pretty good reasons as to why they quit on the spot, but I'll give you a pretty mundane reason I quit on the spot. I was working retail at the time, and it was near Valentine's Day. I wanted to visit my girlfriend who lived across the country, so I told my boss about 3 weeks in advance that I wasn't going to be available on Valentine's Day weekend. He says okay. So when I get the schedule for that week I get a big ol' surprise, I'm scheduled that weekend. I talk to my boss and say hey I told you I'm not going to be there this weekend, 
can you get someone else to do it please? And he says no you're scheduled I said okay, but it wasn't guaranteed. I already bought plane tickets, and I wasn't about to to lose out on spending time with my significant other, so I told him well I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to be there, so you might as well get someone else. And he replied yeah we'll see like my life depended on this shittier slave wage job. Anyway Valentine's weekend comes around, and I spend it over on the opposite coast. Boston gets fucking cold man, Californians beware. Don't really hear from my manager, and honestly at that point I don't really even care. I come back, and the manager brings me into the office and back quote writes me up back quote, which is bullshit speak for sending a report to corporate I guess. I essentially write something along the lines of I gave this insane full 3 weeks advance to plan accordingly, to cover 2 measly shifts, if he can't manage that why, is he even a manager? Told him as I was signing this stupid write up document, that I won't be working there any longer starting now. His face, shocked Pikachu. I guess he never really had someone push back against management before. He seemed perplexed as to why I would leave a job I didn't like. Retail is misery, the managers are miserable, the workers are miserable, because the customers are insufferable. I work as an engineer now, but man that one year of retail experience in college was so eye-opening of how the public treats you and then how your manager treats you. I wouldn't take that year back as it gave me a lot of perspective of how to not treat anyone like garbage. Worked at Chick-fil-A for two weeks. They pay me weekly, I negotiated with the director so my starting pay was $14 slash HR. Train front of house, and my fourth day in I had people in back of house saying they thought I'd been there a long time cause I knew what I was doing. I was training other people by that weekend. My paycheck comes, and I see it was for $12 slash HR. Okay simple fix I just tell the director and he can pay me the back pay. I text him. Next day at work, while I'm off the clock on my lunch break he interrupts me eating to spin a lie and says I agreed to $12 slash HR for the first two weeks of training then after that it is an evaluation for a possible raise. I was absolutely pissed. Then he makes it worse by saying he got with the FO director and someone named Jordan. Never worked with or even heard of a Jordan to discuss my performance and getting that possible raise. What they had to say was she needs to engage with the staff more and more smiles. Are you faking kidding me? I'm a trainee running for training new people and their complaint is I need to smile more working a 10 hour shift at faking Chick-fil-A. Goes to show they had no idea what they were even talking about. I finished my lunch, clocked back in. Some dumb a 17 year old pothead who thought he ran the show told me he needed me to clean the coffee makers. So I got my stuff and clocked out and left. When I got in the car I sent the director the text message of him agreeing to dollar sign 14 hours starting pay. I was working as a sysadmin for a financial tech company which did credit card processing. I kind of knew it was a sheet show when I started, because the week before I did, they had a VM die with a corrupt disk, and found out then, that they hadn't actually been backing anything up for 3 years, because the backup server's disk was full, and they had no monitoring on it. Fixing their backups became my first priority upon starting, because the rest of the team was heavily overworked due to upper management dumping way too much on them, and refusing to allocate budget to hire enough people. I even got chewed out a couple of times by management for submitting timesheets for overtime, because they expected us to work 12 hour days without any overtime. What got me to quit, though, wasn't directly related to the above. You see, without talking to my team, who was actually in charge of setting up, managing, and securing servers, some people in engineering had set up an alternate version of our production infrastructure in OZ and changed the software ship to customers to talk to it. Only, they hadn't bothered with things like changing administrator passwords from default. My team only found out about this when they came screaming to us that all of production was down. We looked at our monitoring, went, what the fuck are you talking about? No it's not. And they went, not that, the stuff in ours. Turns out that every single server had been compromised, and most had been turned into cryptomoners, which was then shut down. After explaining what happened and what was wrong with this to both the CEO and CTO, we were eventually able to force them to switch back to using the managed, secure systems which we had, which would actually pass a PCI DSS audit. 
About two weeks after that happened, all of our infrastructure shut down. This was because we used Amazon for our DNS, and our account had been compromised. This, it turns out, was because, three years prior, the CEO had hard-coded an OAS access token into our server software, as part of an aborted feature. When the aforementioned insecure servers were compromised, someone grabbed the software, and found that token in it, which gave them enough access, to figure out what they needed to fully compromise the account. This outage lasted for several hours, because the only admin contact on the OAS account, was a former employee, who hadn't been working there for a year and a half. We were eventually able to track him down, and call him to get OAS to restore our control, but by then the damage was done. A couple of days later, we had a thorough RFO meeting, identified exactly what happened, how it happened, and steps to take to prevent it in the future, and the CEO signed off on our conclusions, and agreed to implement our recommendations. The next Tuesday, during our weekly all hands, the CEO announced to the entire company that the outage had been caused because the systems team hadn't properly secured the servers running in OAS, allowing our credentials to leak to hackers, and that the only policy change being made was cancelling annual bonuses for the systems team as punishment for not preventing this. By the time our manager got back to his desk, he had three resignation letters on it, and I was already headed for the door. I would name and shame them, but as it was, they had their lawyers send me threats to sue for breach of contract for quitting with no notice, and they've shown themselves to be very lawsuit happy when it comes to anything which could affect their public image. I can't really afford to defend a slap suit. I worked at a call center for XM slash Sirius Radio slash Direct of selling the Sunday ticket my senior year of high school. My dad had to have open heart surgery like rushed to the hospital after a stress test Monday afternoon to getting surgery Tuesday morning. So not a full-blown emergency, but a quick let's not fack around. So after school I go to the hospital and the doctor is explaining things to me, and explaining his recovery. Meaning he's not doing anything for a while obviously. So I would need to help my mom take care of him with recovery, and take care of the house. I call work, and explain the situation to my direct supervisor. She says I need to talk to the manager of the whole call center, and transfers me to him. I tell him the situation. He says well you don't qualify for family leave, I can't give you time off. Not even unpaid I told him I can either have the time off of I quit he still, said no and to come in that day. To which I responded well you can just shove this shitty job up your ass then. And hung up. That guy was an asshole every change he got so telling off was pretty satisfying. My mom looked kind of shocked, since I was next to her, until I explained what happened then she agreed. I had my direct supervisor in a college class a few months later. She told me she quit shortly after, and that it was bullshit they refused to give me the time off, to be with my dad. Fuck you Nick, and fact a less of us is direct. I worked as a grass cutter, but doubled up as a driver, so I'd drive myself and four others to a location, we'd all jump out, cut grass and move on. I can't remember the exact amount, but it was advertised as decent pay which is why I took it. Interview passed, paperwork filled out. At this point I was 18 over 19 and still figuring contracts etc point out, so I work my first month, and paycheck rolls around, and it looks a bit short. I calculated it, and it amounted to minimum wage. Next day I raise it to a manager, and get told it was never advertised at the price you think it was, so I produce the photo I took of the job ad at the time, and get yelled at, in front of the whole office crew I have people here that have worked for me for 5 years, that don't make that much. Do you really think you deserve more than someone that's been here 5 years? After explaining I'm working two roles for him, and that I don't get to rest between locations he called me greedy, and said it ain't gonna happen. So I didn't turn up the next day knowing full well he had no other drivers, and therefore nothing could get done, until he'd hired someone new. Turns out he was applying to be an events manager, and was using this job as evidence of his coordination skills. That seemingly went to pot, and I didn't see that company's vans driving around the area after a year or so. I used to work for a well-known coffee chain in Canada. I worked there for 5 years. My manager who I had worked with for the 5 years was great. She had set me up on management training to be her assistant manager. 
in the fourth year of working there the owner, who owned multiple locations, closed one of his stores and merged the good staff with his remaining locations. And assigned our store a new assistant manager and effectively cork blocked me from every moving up. My manager knew I was pissed, yet I continued to show up for every shift working for my 8 bucks an hour. The owner made me a shift supervisor, but decided I wouldn't get the raise that comes with the extra responsibility. Yet I continued to show up to work. I never called in sick to my shifts always showed up on time, did my job and then some. Model employee. All this setup just to say, the job eventually started to get to me. The amount of work I did for the owner, only to be sheet on and pushed out of a position that I was set up for, to save him a few bucks. The mental stress was too much, and it started affecting my health. I had a long weekend one month, and I was stressed the whole time, because I just didn't want to go back to work. I was puking all morning the day I was to be back on shift. My family was begging me to just call in sick, you can't work like this. So I did after 5 and a half years, 4 hours before my shift with plenty of time, to find someone to cover, I called in sick. The new assistant manager was on duty, she tells me, you better come in, or you will be in big trouble. Okay, it'll come in. I came in, on time, with all my uniforms, threw them in her face, told to shove this job up her as beside the boss's cork. Made sure it was loud enough for all the staff to hear, went home, had a beer. A little example of being patronized, wasn't part of the job description. This was at the beginning of July. I worked in medical laboratory software. I was assigned to investigate and test a new feature. This feature is specifically for a lab test that I have done thousands of times. Me being the only one in the company that has done this lab test, besides the company owner he's very rude, a bit odd in character, and very hot headed, a supervisor approached me directly to start testing the feature before implementation. I happily accepted, I love this kind of stuff. Pretty cool feature so far too. That week and over the weekend, I tested things and found that some of the math was wrong in the feature. Even reviewed it with a few friends who picked up on the math issue too. It just needed a denominator adjustment. Simple work stuff. Fast forward to Monday's weekly team meeting. Owner is in town. Seems to be going well until it's time to present my findings. Some very simple math seemed to have pissed off the owner for some odd reason and he just patronized me for having only worked in one hospital. I guess my bachelor's degree, 9 clinical internships and 6 years in the field mean my simple math was wrong. I told him not to patronize me in front of my team, if he wants my opinion. I think he said leave the meeting, but I was already on my way, to pack up my desk. Back in 2011 I had been working an oil field plant job blending dry cement for casings, loading trucks, moving trucks around the yard, etc. I enjoyed the job. It had predictable hours, was close to home, was mentally engaging as I had to work formulas to convert, blends into weights of various chemicals and additives. They pay wasn't fantastic, and for this reason I had been somewhat considering moving on to something else. It was an excellent work environment with awesome coworkers and great low level management. All in all a far cry from most of the horror stories in this thread. Then a call came from corporate in Canada. Apparently they had been overpaying me by $1,200 a month for the year I had been employed there. To rectify this, they corrected my pay and would be deducting an additional $1,200 for the following year. Overnight I took a $2,400 per month decrease in what I had considered to be an already paltry salary. What I was left with couldn't even cover my mortgage. After learning this, I immediately left took a 3 hour lunch break at the bar, returned to finish up a couple things, and left early. I worked the next week normally, while I tried to figure out the legality of what they were doing, and apparently the law was on their side. My argument was that I never would have stayed as long as I had if my pay was any lower than it was currently let alone $1,200 per month. The only option I had was to quit. I'm not working 40 hours for $200. I ended up spending the next 3 months unemployed, ruining my credit, but was able to keep my house. 
At the time my area was hit hard by floods, so I spent the first three weeks traveling around volunteering, helping evacuate residents, filling sandbags, monitoring water levels, building spillways, etc. which was a great and fulfilling experience that I wouldn't have otherwise had the opportunity to do. Worked weekend office job alone on shift for 20 years. Powered through a lot of bullshit, because working alone had some perks, but mostly because it had already been 20 faking years, and like a bad marriage I kept justifying the bullshit, because I didn't know how to leave. Like the devil you know kind of thing. Backstory job started out decent with a kicker's boss and a lot less stress for the salary. Unfortunately about 10 years in that company was purchased by a bigger one, they canned our original manger and brought in a new one. Job became typical corporate middle management incompetence making profits on the backs of the frontline staff and taking the credit and I can only assume profit sharing and bonuses. Because we certainly never saw any extra money. They just kept piling on the work but not giving raises and treating us like replaceable staff slash numbers on payroll. Worse every year. Got to the point where I was handling the work of all the other branches that were closed on the weekend. For no extra pay. I guess they figured why. Pay 10 employees when you can pay one. Add to that the uneducated narcissistic manager they brought in when they bought us. I gritted my teeth through almost a decade of her stomping around calling us McFly throwing around paperwork and what she OBV thought were benign ethnic slurs like calling her Italian superior a faking meatball. Just generally being a giant egotistical piece of sheet. With her retirement looming, I held out hope that we'd score a decent replacement that would maybe advocate for us or at least not grind us for no perks. But. Within a month of her retiring and the new manager taking her place I got a wake up call. The office furnace broke. At the beginning of my 12 hour shift. In January. In Ontario. After repeated emails to new manager notifying him that the temp was dropping a couple degrees an hour and I could now see my breath he finally responded with bundle up. I don't know why it was that. But that was it. I knew I couldn't be a part of the toxic bullshit circus anymore. So I didn't quit. I stayed cool and collected. Then I went right to my family doctor and took a year long stress leave. I collected employment insurance and retained my full benefits for 52 weeks. When my leave was up I played along like I was returning then gave my notice a couple days before my scheduled return date leaving them with no one to run the branch. Bundle up indeed. Beaches. I was 19 years old working. Temp work, a summer groundskeeping job for a school district. The supervisor and his lackey were complete pieces of redneck sheet and were making me do all the work while they faked off chewing tobacco and sitting in the shade bullshitting. The final straw was when I had just finished mowing the grass around the high school track and asked where the leaf blower was so I could clean the clippings off the track. Supervisor said they didn't have a leaf blower and told me to brush the clippings off the track, a rubber track with a faking synthetic nylon brush. I tried to explain the complicated scientific theory of friction and the sheer yardage of area needing to be cleaned versus the amount of time in the day, but the supervisor wasn't getting it and said, while sitting on his ass in the shade, well, you best get going on it then cause we ain't leaving until that track is cleared. Supervisor and his buddy thought they were pretty faking funny laughing at me and slapping each other on the back. We had all arrived at this job in a school district truck and it was the only way back to the motor pool where my car was parked so I didn't really have a way out of there pre-cell phone era until they both faked off to the porter of potties and I jumped in the district truck and drove away leaving them both stranded. While driving back to the groundskeeping building, about 30 minutes away, I decided to help myself to their lunch coolers as I was pretty hungry from doing all the work. Supervisor's lunch was a egg salad and sandwich, soda, and a fresh can of Skull Winter Green. I faking hate egg salad, but forced myself to take a bite out of it, spit it out on the windshield, drank the soda, and dumped the Skull all over the bench seat. When I got back to the motor pool, I left the keys in the ignition on accessory mode with the headlights and radio on, and left a note telling the guy that he's an asshole, and that his wife's sandwich tasted like sheet. Jumped in my car, went home and never heard from the temp agency again. How the fuck those guys? 
never got the chance to quit. But, at one point, when I was young and desperate, as opposed to being old and desperate i.e., now, I worked for a blimpers sub shop, that I later found out was not actually a blimpers, they just bought the building, and kept the sign and everything. They were the biggest pile of OSHA violations I've ever seen, they kept all the meat cheese and condiments in the cooler bar overnight instead of fridging them, bought lettuce from a homeless man who admittedly pulled it out of a dumpster, never used gloves or proper cleaning procedures, roaches, mildew, etc etc etc. And I only worked 3 days so who knows what else was going down. Anyway, day 3 I'm told to use the meat slicer, which I've never used, before in my life to cut some lettuce. I ask for instructions, and get told condescendingly you stick the lettuce in one side, and it comes out the other it's not rocket science. When I asked if they had a safety glove like if seen used at previous jobs they just laughed at me. So of course 5 minutes later I cut off the tip of my finger. They refused to look for it, so I ended up having to have my finger cauterized which to this day is one of the most painful things I've ever experienced. In fairness they did drop me off at the local walk-in clinic, because it was cheaper, who immediately ambulances me to an actual hospital, like I'd said would happen. When I went in the next day, to talk about the bill I was immediately fired for not following safety procedures. The morons even told me flat out it was, so I wouldn't sue them. So of course I immediately start looking into lawyers. However, before anything came of it, they packed up and left town in the middle of the night as I was one of a long list of PPL looking to sue them into oblivion, including the Blimpers Corporation themselves, Geo figure. Still can't believe they got away with it, as long as they did. Michelin starred chef owned restaurant. It wasn't the one he got his star for, but I was staging there before moving on to the actual starred restaurant. Come in for my stage behind the bar. Ask for the drink specialist as my priorities are, get to know my cowhawkers, and see if we work well, see my own proficiency and experience to see if I fit in, begin to learn the menu, and meet the regulars. I'm immediately told we don't do 3 of the 10 signature drinks, because my fellow cowhawkers were never taught how to use egg whites in a drink. Okay, so I know it took me years before I learned the process for emulsifying egg whites for sours, right because I was never taught it before then, so moving on, but they were on the menu, so I was confused. It wasn't like obscure drinks either. I had to make a $42 Long Island because there was no button for it, so I was told to tell the server in one shot each of every liquor and then an egg add-on. I knew it would be argued about once the price was seen on the bill, but had to make it anyway. I just begin taking over service well at the manager's request to see my technique. With the help of the spec sheet, and it being a Tuesday, things are running smoothly. No returned drinks, very little spillage. So I start dealing with bar guests as I have spare time, to get to know them. Order taking are left to the staff as I didn't know the menu and didn't want to mess with their tips for the night, but random sides of sauce, extra bread, running food, got it. I run into the back and see not only servers, but the exec chef grabbing bread and other condiments with bare hands, no gloves or utensils. Support staff not wearing gloves rolling silverware. My send place is just grabbed by hand out of a tub. I worked out the rest of the shift out of respect, but 1000% turned down the job offer. I worked at a Ruby Tuesday that was more hygienic. Working at CVS in a small town, where the only options are a 7 to 11, CVS, and a Safeway. The breakdown is 60% Safeway, 35% CVS, and 5% 7 to 11. Our tech breaks down regularly. Our RF units, Ironman units, are dead or stolen slash lost which means when we need to receive or release a wraps package or when we get a shipment or delivery we need to wait 5 to 10 minutes. Our registers refuse to accept valid coupons even when they are connected to the same extra care accounts, free accounts and are still valid for weeks. Sometimes the coupon says $4 of $20 purchase and they buy $20 of non-restricted items and we have to say I'm sorry this coupon is expired slash is on the wrong account slash phone hash and deal with the elderly is confused slash angry but this is the only phone number I've used in hash of years. 
we are texted by our boss literally every 30 minutes, after she leaves until 11pm have you gotten a Carapace subscription every shift I have worked for the past week by the way Carapace is a paid subscription, that I have had two elderly customers come in, complain, and genuinely cry due to the difficulty of cancelling it. We, I, call 1-800-CVS shop and the operator tries to refuse to cancel the customer subscription even as I try AMD explain the customer desperately want to cancel their subscription. It is extremely scary. Then there is also the fact that we regularly lose Fuji camera films that we develop, updated last week from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 weeks to develop, film and that we then need another week to resin the film. We lack you boats to carry totes and bulk packages, carts, and RF units. Our registers go offline, cannot process any transactions or lotto tickets, printers fail, can't print receipts or coupons, and can't assist customers with even finding out proper prices. Also there is no comprehensive training for refunds, reprinting photo orders, anything with the lotto system, coupons issues, of which there are bare minimum 20 every shift, ACO, self-checkout, or UPS package issues meaning that, when an issue arrives we are forced to prostrate ourselves, while waiting for a manager. Lastly because of budget, cuts due to stores bot reaching the 6 carapace subscriptions, $5 a month or $48 a year, we get our hours cut meaning that in a large store like mine we will have 2 ppl from 7 to 12 pm. This means that we have more theft which leads to a reduced budget forcing more budget cuts all, while every 2 weeks we are td most of our concern is internal, employee, theft not customer theft. Now that is what most CVS employees are dealing with but my store, CVS 09203, Moraga, California, 94556, got a new manager that within 8 days of replacing the previous store manager, also forced out the shift manager, cut most employees hours by 30% did 60% of the work the previous manager did, has bad relations with all but the beauty consultant of our store. I requested time off 3 weeks before, and I told her one day, after I made the request 2 weeks later with me asking roughly every 4 days, if she could accept it, she always said him looking into it, or some version 8 days, before I left I talked, totty assistant manager, temp, and said I will not be here, and he got it covered by 20 minutes. Fax EVS. Im employee 1,936,699 and am putting in my two weeks notice once I get back and going back to Amazon cause while they will treat me like sheet, at least I'll make another $6 hour and their tech actually works. Come far me, ridiculous as holes I've worked as a gas station attendant, Amazon warehouse worker and Amazon delivery drive and all three of those options are better than working for CVS. A little late to the party, but I worked a whatever job deep cleaning cars for 6 weeks. It was supposed to just pay the bills before I went traveling, but I didn't last. First off, my boss had us cleaning cars inside with no drains on the floor when it was cold out. This means basically playing slip and slide. Second, he accidentally grabbed my ass and tried to play it off like it was a joke. Third, while he guaranteed hours, when I started, when we slowed down I went from full time to part time, but would still have to show up every day on time, in case we had a car to wash. But the kaka? I was cleaning a moldy work truck that was disgusting. I'm talking every time you touched a part of the vehicle more mold and other things would surface. Plus it was for a customer that paid less, so I was told to not be as thorough. His process took two days, and he asked me where I was at on the end of day Friday. I'll let him know it's not great, but I had gotten to a certain point on the checklist. He agreed to call off his staff the next day and he would just finish it. I woke up to a text on Saturday morning ripping me a new one about how this car was wrong and unacceptable. Buddy made it sound like I had let someone die or something, sent me a multi-page text with pictures. I didn't even finish reading or reply, and decided no way am I taking this sheet. Went in to quit on Monday, and told him I was leaving. At first he tried to sweet talk me into staying, but when I, he realized I was serious he lost his sheet. Started screaming at me in the parking lot holding my truck door open, so I couldn't leave. It finished with him telling me I was an awful human who has single-handedly destroyed his business. I thanked him for sharing that with me and drove away. 
The best part though. One of the things I said when I quit is if I'm getting inconsistent hours I may as well go back to bartending and make $300 a night. The next time I saw him, he came into the steakhouse bar I just got hired at, where he was a twice a month regular, and I made $300 that night. His wife made him tip me. It was beautiful. I worked for a family owned restaurant, two of them, actually, a breakfast place and a nicer dinner restaurant. I had been there 4 years at that point. I was a good server. A really good server. My sister was pregnant with her second child. This was a big deal, because she is an addict, and got clean, so she could have a healthy baby. This also meant, that our relationship was mended. She was due late summer, and had begged me to be in the room, when her daughter was born. I told the owner's daughter, that my sister was due sometime in the next week or two, and, if was scheduled that day, that I would be calling in, because I wanted to be there, when she had the baby. Somehow she heard I want the whole weekend off which is what she told her mother. When her mother pulled me aside and accused me of taking the whole weekend off, I corrected her and told her exactly what I'd told her daughter. They told me I couldn't take any time off. It was summer and busy. The rest of my shift, they skipped me during seating. They were kind of notorious for this, if you pissed them off at all, they'd fuck with your money. So, I finished out my shift, wrote a note which basically said I'd give you two weeks notice, but I don't feel like being punished for 10 more shifts. You forget that we are all human too. Maybe start treating your staff better. And I left. My niece was born two days late. She was beautiful and perfect. I watched her enter this world. Unfortunately, almost two years later, I also watched her exit the world when she died from a large brain tumor. I never regretting quitting my job. Seeing my niece born was one of the most important events of my life. I literally just did this yesterday. I had already put in my two weeks notice and only had until this Friday to work, then bring my equipment in at the end of the day. I had some VPN issues on Tuesday with a brief internet outage in the afternoon just before the end of my shift. The next day I opened my inbox and there was a lengthy email from my manager about expectations. Continuing upon previous discussions. But what made me quit on the spot was the demand that I work in office the rest of the week and adjust my shift to be an hour later in slash out. Which would put me in the worst traffic times morning and afternoon and I lived 45 minutes away but the new time would make that an hour and 15 minutes each way for commuting. We've been working at home since March 2020. I just had a baby a few months ago that still won't take bottles. So I'm able to feed baby while working, or on my breaks, but there is someone home caring for them during the rest of the time. I can't be away from my baby for a long period of time. As my baby wasn't feeling well already I decide that quitting two days early wouldn't really impact the team. Packed up my home office and turned in all my stuff. Sent an email to the manager and director. Then went to lunch and a baby clothing shopping spree. Enjoying some extra time off before my new job starts. Eater, covered hit right before my first raise was due, and I'd be eligible for bonuses. All bonuses and raises suspended, and still haven't been reinstated 2.5 years with no raise. Not to mention all the extra work I out enduring covered, while two thirds of the staff was furloughed. No job is more important than family. It's a tie I worked at a local small corner store in the deli. My manager was an awesome dude. The owner Karen, however, is absolutely unhinged. My, now, fiancé and I were going to stay in my family's cabin for the weekend. I traded my Sunday shift with a coworker with permission. Karen had no say, because the manager was the person in charge on Sundays. Well, my fiancé had to cancel due to work-related issues. So I decided to take my younger brother, 19, and son, 2. To our cabin anyway. On our way, we decided to stop in at my store for snacks and such. I introduced my brother to Karen, as my brother, mind you. The rest of the weekend was wonderful and pretty uneventful. When I went back into work on Monday, I walked into the store, clocked in, and did my startup duties. Walked into the front, to ask Karen for something, can't remember now, and overheard her gossiping to a customer, about me. She said that I lied about having a boyfriend because I was actually sleeping with my brother. I was so mad that I went into the back 
clocked out, and went home. Didn't even say anything. I felt bad after I got home, so I called the manager and apologized. Thankfully, he had no hard feelings. It wasn't the first time Karen had gossiped about me, but it was the last. The second time, I worked at Dollar General after my second child was born. Worked my ass off, and was constantly told by my manager that I had manager qualities and she wanted to promote me. Sweet. In October of 2019 I kept having really bad cramps that would make me want to black out at times. Couldn't go to the doctor because it usually happened at work. One day, my fiancé came home early because he got food poisoning. I was getting ready for work when I felt the worst pain I've ever felt. I blacked out. My fiancé insisted I go to the hospital. Called my manager on the way there. She insisted I go in as soon as I was done at the hospital. Long story short, I had an ectopic pregnancy and cyst burst at the same time. Lost between 4 and 6 liters of blood before they could get me into surgery. Got out of the hospital at 2 a.m. I had 12 missed calls. She threatened to fire me unless I took a doctor's note in. I took it in the next day and quit on the spot. No job is worth my life. Worked for USBS. These days they require a lot of overtime for several reasons. I was fine with 6 days a week and overtime almost every day for a while. The poor work slash life balance started to weigh on me a bit I'll be honest, but I was looking forward to good benefits and retirement in the long road, and I was getting good feedback on my work ethic. Tuesdays were my one day off. So, a couple months in, I go to clock out on a Monday, my sixth day in a row, and there's a sticky, not on my time card that reads, you must come in tomorrow your day off is now Wednesday. Sorry, thanks. That's fine, must have been a fluke. Someone called out, whatever. I work through the seventh day, ending at 10 hours, have my day off. Start my next stint on Thursday and get all the way to Monday. I finish my route and some extra at 8.5 hours on an especially hot humid, day 90 something outside. If you don't know, the mail trucks can get to 120 plus F easily on the inside. I get back, sweaty and tired from walking, and heat and they hand me another hour and a half of deliveries. I'm thinking fuck this sucks, I gather all my additional deliveries, and start to head out with the mantra I have tomorrow off just push through. I then get this funny feeling like that's not true. On a hunch, I glance up at the time cards, and see mine has another sticky note on it. It reads the same as before. Additionally, my route was close enough to the office that it was the closest bathroom, so I walked by management multiple times a day. They could have told me, called me, texted me, but they've given me less than 24 hours notice via a sticky note, again, for the second week in a row. Long story short my last job before this had horrible management and I wasn't about to work another job for years and years with this kind of behavior from on high. I resigned on the spot. I don't regret it, but I do have a new respect for the local USBS carriers. If you can, leave them water in the hot months they deserve it and appreciate it greatly. This was for a cricket wireless authorized dealer I used to work for. Last year during the height of coronavirus, I found out my coworker's mom, who she lived with in close contact, tested positive for COVID-19 and that my boss knew about it but didn't inform me. For context, at most stores it's just a few people, and at my store it was just my cow walker, and I running the location. Needless to say, given the near certainty of my cow walker also getting covered, which she later did as expected, I called my boss, and asked if she could be given some paid time off, and I would pick up her shifts, or if we could work separate times with me willing to cut my own hours, which would have saved him money. Needless to say, he gave me an entire speech about how he couldn't do anything about it, and that he didn't believe I was actually concerned. So I told him I quit. The story doesn't end there, he immediately called me, and had the audacity to act insulted, because I had hung up on him, after saying I quit, and said he had thought of a compromise which was, that we work separate times, which I had just suggested in the previous conversation with him. He gave me a bunch of fake bullshit about how this wasn't professional, but he didn't wanna see me make a bad decision etc. So I decided to play it smart, I acted like it was fine, and immediately started looking for a better job. 
he came into my store a few days later, and we had this whole conversation about how I was committed to this job and he wanted to make things right, but I knew, if he could afford to lose me at that moment, he would. I told him I was totally committed, so he would leave me the fuck alone, and a few days later I got an interview at another authorized dealer, where I would have less things to worry about, that's another thing, this former boss of mine always had something to complain about, and get paid more. I immediately accepted, and turned in my two week notice the following day. Of course, immediately my former boss decided to be an imbecile about it. So I just locked the store up, took every last thing that was mine from the store up to, and including the hand soap and toilet paper, and walked out. The best part is that the idiot sent me a termination letter, so I got to claim a week of unemployment, and had proof to back it up. I got a week's paid vacation, and started my new job a week early, and went on to earn nearly $10,000 more last year than I would have with my former boss. This year I'm on track, to make $20,000 more than I would have. I'm so glad I quit that dumpster fire of a business. I had a job as a waiter. We had a dishwasher that was responsible for washing the dishes to two restaurants simultaneously, he would run up and down between them. He was expected to take a break, but couldn't because if he did, there would be no dishwasher between the two restaurants to clean the dishes. This was also the kind of restaurant that had just enough plates and spoons for every table and no extra. This was in Carmel CA, where Clint Eastwood used to be the mayor. So it's not a cheap place, and neither were the prices of the restaurant. The dishwasher was encouraged to take breaks and work through them, but wouldn't. He would just work through them. If he didn't take a break he would be fired. So he took a force break. Then the dishes started piling up in both restaurants. Then there were no dishes for the cooks to prepare food on. So they pulled him out of his break they forced him on and told him to wash all of the dishes and fast. When the manager came in, the dishwasher said, after I'm through with this, we need to have a talk. The manager turned around, smashing his hands down on the table and screamed I don't talk to dishwashers. So I went to my table and informed my guests that I was resigning because the manager doesn't talk to dishwasher. I was working a summer job as a waitress in a Greek cafe in Astoria. I had just received a full scholarship to law school, but I needed to save up money to pay for books and living expenses. My brother came in to visit with my 5 year old nephew and they sat at a table outside. I was serving a lot of tables, but I'm managing it all well, when I looked over and saw my nephew tumble forward and hit his mouth on the table and blood started spewing out. I excused myself quickly from the customer I was helping to go help, and I put a cloth on his mouth. My boss told me to get back to work helping other customers. He had already been very abusive to everyone for months, but I knew that I was leaving, so it didn't faze me, but that was the last straw. I told my brother to leave, and that I would meet him in 5 minutes then I turned to my boss, and told him that I quit. I was pretty popular at the place, and brought in a lot of customers, because I'm friendly, so he cornered me on my way down to get my stuff, in this scary dungeon next to the freezer, and called me names and screamed. I wasn't scared. I just grinned at him, and thanked him for the opportunity, and told him that what he was doing was illegal, and asked him if he really wanted to go to jail over this. He stepped aside, I walked out. I've been a successful attorney for the last 16 years, but this question brought me back to that time when I had little power and was abused by a tyrant boss. I don't know how to help others in this similar situation other than leaving really big tips to waitresses and bartenders, because I never forget. This is one of 20 stories that I have, but for some reason this one came to mind first. The other amazing and equally terrible ones happened after I became a lawyer. It doesn't only happen to blue collar workers. Employer abuse is rampant. Used to work at a small diner that I absolutely adored. I adored it because no one did drugs. If you're in the industry you know how incredibly rare it is to find a restaurant that isn't seething with addiction. I used to call it my oasis, because I could just happily beat on my grill without worrying about my coworkers being strung out, drunk, unavailable, violent, etc all the symptoms and signs. One day the owner sold the place as is, including me. I was fine with this. New owner seemed fine. We actually became good friends. 
After a year of being under the new owner he became a mentor to me. Even said I was like a daughter to him. One day he hired his buddy, who had recently gotten fired from the nicest restaurant in town. His buddy was a raging cokehead. He would flip sheet for no reason, disrespect me, scream at me in front of customers, do everything wrong, and then blame me. No call no show, show up late. One time I literally caught him selling coke in the parking lot. He was infecting my oasis with his sheety habit and even worse attitude. The owner was completely blinded by apparently the years he had known this guy. I tried talking to him about it multiple times, he never listened. So one day coke head guy just straight up doesn't show up. We were slammed, so I didn't have time to make up his prep work. He calls at the end of his shift and literally tells the owner that he went on a bend last night, passed out, and woke up to his entire apartment empty because some people he brought home robbed him when he passed out. To which my owner says it's all good man. Don't worry about it. See you tomorrow. I'm thinking the owner is definitely doing drugs with this guy, who there's no way in ever living fact he'd be cool with that. Didn't reprimand the bastard at all. If I had done that he would have fired me on the spot, because I would never do that. I pull the owner aside and explain to him that he just let a raging lunatic get away with even more lunacy and that that's going to put an even bigger chip in his shoulder and he's probably going to treat me even worse. He of course didn't listen. I should have quit right then but guys. I truly loved this diner. The place was my home before any of these ashats had ever stepped foot in the place. So I trucked on. The next day coke head shows up. He's super strung out. He's hyper and angry and flustered. He's muttering to himself in the back trying to do all his prep for two days. Mind you, any time I need something and he doesn't have it done yet, then I just go do it myself. But over the weeks he would get super pissed if I did any of his prep for him. So I stopped and just went without and when I didn't have something that I needed for an order, I would just tell the owner. It was a really shitty situation. So now he's back from his bend and no call no show and he's being a dick in the back and I'm up front making orders. I very nicely call to him that I need sliced tomatoes. He says he doesn't have them. I say okay just grab me a tomato and I'll cut it myself. He flips sheet. He starts screaming at me to get out of his face literally starts screaming at me so loud the entire restaurant, all the customers and our two waitresses stop what they are doing and look. I faking had it with this guy at this point, so I screamed back. I had backed down every time and tried to fix everything professionally, but that clearly wasn't working, so I just screamed back. I was done. I said dude, I'm not in your face. I'm asking for a mother faking tomato. If you could do your faking job this wouldn't be a problem. He starts stonewalling me and just keeps screaming for me to get out of his face I was literally across the kitchen. Like a solid 15 feet away lol. The owner comes flying over from across the building to break this up. I say I'm leaving. This is insane. The owner begs me to stay. I'm overly loyal so I do. He pulls cokehead outside. And cokehead doesn't come back for about 20 minutes. I cut the tomato. And serve the dish and carry on. I'm happy. I feel safe. I think he sent the guy home maybe even fired him. Nope. Dude comes walking back inside 20 minutes later. I tell owner look, you are not giving this man any consequences, and I'm sick of it. I do not feel comfortable working with him. I can't believe you just sent him on break and called it good. So owner gives me this dumbfounded look and says really? Okay. Let's go talk to him. I said I don't want to talk to him, that's the point. He insists. He takes us both outside, I think this is completely futile, because I've already tried talking to this guy on my own multiple times to no avail. He's insane, there is no reasoning. The owner starts the conversation, says okay explain your side. Cokehead goes off saying she lied. She's a faking liar. I'm like what? So I'm just trying to play along, and do what the owner is asking and be diplomatic, or whatever. So as calmly and rationally as I can, I try to explain. Look, I don't know what you're saying I'm lying about, but I just needed tomatoes. I offered to even cut them for you. You flipped out. This has been happening for months. You treat me like dirt. And he cut me off. Lost his sheet again. Now he's literally screaming at me in front of our boss calling me a liar. 
have no idea what he was accusing me of lying about specifically, but whatever. That was it. I was done. But it was really hard because I still to this day absolutely love that diner. It was some of the best times I ever had. I miss what it used to be terribly. After I left there every cook the owner hired to replace me quit within two weeks because obviously they didn't want to deal with cokehead. After about a month of me leaving cokehead either quit or was fired. The place literally closes due to staffing issues often. I live very close by, so I noticed all this. What a shame. RIP my little oasis. Don't do drugs kids. Sorry it was so long. That was cathartic. TLDR. Cokehead screamed at me and called me a liar, so I walked out on my happy place. Worked at a call center for insurance, was constantly talked down to by people calling for info and ignoring what I had to say but that's whatever. One day a particularly bad call had a lady shouting at me and telling my I had a lower IQ than a slice of bread and swearing at me up and down 45 minutes of this. I tried multiple times to get a supervisor to take the call via calls and internal messenger apps nothing. She wouldn't believe me repeatedly telling her that she was calling the wrong department in the first place and the supervisors literally all rejected taking it and told me to just keep going until she seems pleased and I wasn't allowed to hang up. I dealt with it. I hated it, but I held on through. Eventually she agreed to take the phone number for the correct department. Next day, my direct supervisor called me in to tell me I was being written up for giving false information. Apparently the lady wrote the number down one number wrong, verified by recording of the call that I gave the correct number, but didn't ask her to repeat it back to make sure she heard correctly and called in to raise all hell. I walked back to my cubicle shaking, couldn't bring myself to turn back on my phone line and just sent a message to my supervisor saying I can't take this place anymore I quit and I walked downstairs and turned my name badge in and walked out the building. Started working in a little restaurant at home during a summer break from uni. The owner was also the manager and I told her in my interview that I had no waiting experience and she was nice and said not to worry and that training would be given. Would it fack? She spent my next three shifts barking at me and telling me I was messing up even after she had said she would train me herself and never did. On my third shift, a big table could see how I was struggling, but still trying to provide them with good service. The main guy personally handed me £20 in my hand at the end and thanked me as he acknowledged they had been a busy table and I had gone out of my way for them. As soon as they left she immediately took the £20 from my hand and put it in a jar that was to be shared between all the staff. As the night came to a close she didn't once acknowledge me, not to even explain how to help close up and what was needed, so I took my cues from the barman who was really nice. I didn't get home till after midnight, and this had been a fairly mild night in terms of customers, where my mum had waited up for me. As soon as I saw her I burst into tears, I had never been made to feel so low by another human, being for no reason. The next morning I drove over to the restaurant and told her I was quitting and gave her my details for any pay, knowing full well she wouldn't pay me. After I left I heard from friends that still worked there that she wasn't paying suppliers, so their menu was reduced and eventually the chef walked out on her mid-serve because of how much of a beach she was. I was 16 and working in a well-known computer and appliance shop in the UK. I won't say any names, but it's quite clear what I'm referring to. The manager at the time was a very demanding man, obsessed over sales figures and would throw anyone under the bus for commission and sales figures. An old lady came into the shop and wanted help buying a computer. I approached and asked what they wanted to use the computer for. All they wanted was to send emails to their grandson in Australia, play in a sweeper and use Skype. So, I suggested a very basic computer, as her requirements were basic, and she mentioned she was using her dwindling pension pot. I started running it through the till and along came my manager. Excuse me madam, he bellows. Has my colleague served you well? Has he got you what you needed? The old lady replies saying that all she wanted it for was emails, Skype and Minasweeper. The manager took one look at me, smiled and said that this computer isn't designed for that it barely even starts. So, he continues to recommend a computer well above what she needs. 
that computer cost about 6x what she gets in a month. He also recommends the biggest Microsoft Office package, the care package and all the other extras that she doesn't need she puts it on her credit card. I told my manager I cannot work under him as his greed and his lack of care for customers is abysmal and walked out. I was a programmer working remotely for a guy in the same country. I was asked to generate a report on some data. He phoned me up and called me a faking idiot for not leaving out some data he hadn't told me to leave out. He was the only person who had seen the report by the way. So I put the phone down and went for a walk with my wife and child. The next day he phoned and angrily demanded to know where I had been. I went for a walk, I told him, because I don't work for you anymore. Since when? He asked. Since yesterday, when you spoke to me worse than anyone in my life. We agreed via email that I would drive to his office a couple weeks later and give back his computer and someone there would then give me a check for my last payday. He sent a few emails begging me to come back, but I refused. A couple of days before I was due to drive over to the office, he phoned me. He spoke quietly and weakly. He sounded very very ill. I asked if he was okay and he said not really no. I'm in a lot of pain. I'm in hospital and about to go into surgery. Oh shit, I thought, he must have cancer or something. I started to feel bad for him and wondered if that is why he had been so aggressive. But I decided that I can't be treated like that at work and decided not to offer to go back to work for him. When I arrived at the office I asked how he was doing. Oh, he's fine they said flippantly. I'm really worried about him. He sounded so ill I said. He's only gone in to have his piles. Hemorrhoids. Removed. They laughed. Worked at a gap for a year or so, just doing normal cashier slash sales associate stuff. I'm a trans woman who generally passes pretty well, but sometimes my voice throws people off. Sometimes it gets people to treat me a lot worse real fast. Had a group of very loud women come in and try to return a dress and claimed they never wore it. The dress reeked of perfume to the point where it was easy to smell even without being close to it. I smelled it in front of them just to prove I could in fact detect the perfume and told them the dress had been worn and couldn't be resolved in its current condition. Women proceeded to start intentionally calling me sir and or it, made a scene and demanded a refund while continuously treating me very bad. I didn't shout back and quietly repeated the return policy until they made me depressed enough to just call my manager to handle it. Manager wound up taking their return against company policy. I spent the rest of the shift quietly doing my work trying not to let them get to me, but it definitely worsened my mood for the day. Manager pulled me aside at the end of my shift. I told him in detail what they did to me and expected him to understand. Instead he reprimanded me for being unprofessional with the customers, said my identity shouldn't have affected my mood, and that I should have just broke company policy, something I could get fired for. I said I guess I don't need to be professional about this either, and just walked off without a word. Sent him my two week notice, and didn't work any shifts. I was a nanny for a couple that owned their own business, which was on the ground floor of the building they owned. They lived on the second floor. I was happily pregnant with my first baby when I had some issues in the middle of the night. The air doc told me I was probably going to miscarry and to go on bed rest until I could get in to see my regular ob slash gin. I went into work straight from the hospital and told the woman I couldn't work that day and why. Instead of any form of human compassion, she said, if you're going to miscarry, you're going to miscarry, bed rest won't matter. You can't have time off because I have phone calls to take so just lay down on the couch here while you watch my kids. I wish I were summarizing or paraphrasing, but that is pretty much a direct quote. Obviously I was upset, but somehow I ended up staying upstairs while she went downstairs, ostensibly to figure out a replacement for the next day or two. When she came back upstairs 15 minutes later, it was with a stack of internet articles saying that bed rest usually doesn't make a difference in miscarriages. I quit on the spot. Did I mention that she was my sister-in-law? And that my husband also worked for them at their business in the first floor? Yikes. I followed my doctor's advice, and now my daughter is a healthy 11-year-old that I couldn't live without. 
P.S. They eventually got divorced because my brother-in-law finally figured out she was a horrible person and probably a sociopath. I requested time off to deal with a funeral for my grandfather three days. Boss put the schedule out the next day. My hours were cut from five days on a week like normal to three days on. Guess what days he had scheduled me to work. Yup. Scheduled me off for every day except what I asked for. I asked him if it was a mistake. I informed him I had gone through the correct channels. I submitted all necessary paperwork and while it was short notice, it was for a very, in my mind, justifiable reason. Can't exactly plan a family death. Manager's response, I'm trying to run a business and I can't babysit your schedule. For the record this was the first and only time I had requested time off. Me, babysit, my schedule, I'm burying my faking grandfather not going on a faking cruise. Manager, if I give you time off, whenever you ask for it, I have to do that for everyone. Me, whenever I ask, I'm going to a funeral. Manager, I understand but I have a business me. If your faking mother or father died tonight, you wouldn't be here tomorrow would you? Manager, we ain't talking about me. No fuck you. We are talking about the exact same faking thing. If your faking family died tonight you wouldn't be standing there hem hawing about running a faking business or babysitting schedules. You'd be gone, dealing with that issue. All I'm asking for is some faking common courtesy, so I can go bury someone important to me. You soulless fuck fuck you, and your faking business, suck my ass. And I ripped my schedule up, and threw it in his face. This all happened on the sales floor. Got what appeared to be a dream job. In-house lawyer with a massive national retailer, defined benefit pension, great salary, decent commute, all looked good. My boss, head legal counsel, turned out to be absolutely crazy. Set me up to look bad in front of executive board, prees, VPs etc, in a meeting. I had been asked to research and prepare a memo for my boss to present. The meeting comes, and my boss tells me to go, and present for her. Midway through the meeting I stop the execs and explain to them what happened. They look at each other knowingly and thank me for my time. A week later my boss tells me that we are expecting to be served by workplace safety following a death of an employee in the workplace. The death was almost two years before I joined the company. She then leaves the office, tells nobody where she is going, and leaves her cell phone on her desk. The next day a workplace safety agent comes in and wants to serve a claim against us. There is no reason for me to deny the claim, so I accept service. My boss is not in, so I report to chief legal at head office, my boss boss. Next day my boss returns to the office, immediately asks about this and why I didn't reject service. Tells me that is what I should have done. So now I have been working at this place for 4 weeks. When I joined I told them about a planned vacation, and they approved it. I left on the 5 day trip, my boss wishes me a great trip. I return and my office is empty, just a notepad, desk and chair. Someone mentions to me that my boss had been in my office packing all my stuff in boxes while I was away. My contract says that I report to her and do all lawfully assigned work from her. I spent the next 2 days sitting at my desk reading the paper, she never spoke to me. On day 3 she comes to me and asks me what I'm working on. I explain nothing because she took all my work. She starts yelling. I get up, grab my keys and walk out. Three insane antics in five weeks. The president of the company asked me to come back. I said no. I found out that my predecessor was suing them for her antics and I became a witness in his claim against them. They paid me for two months after I left. No reason why I think they just felt bad. She still works there. Back in 2004, I was young and not large of stature. I took a two-day gig to supplement my income by stripping a foundation for cash. I had no idea what I was getting into. I show up at a breakfast joint at 6am where the company owner buys his help breakfast as tradition. He asks me my name. It turns out that he did a job for my parents 20 years ago and my mom beached about his work. He says if I was your dad, I would buried that beach in the swamp when I had the chance. Now this guy is 5 feet 4 inches but had shoulders 3 wide and fingers the size of quarters. 
It appeared that he had Neanderthal DNA. Not joking. I had heard that he was a hermit who liked to hunt with pistols at night and enjoyed eating possum. He also had a team of high school ex-wrestlers and rough people who seemed to like him. I just said that's kinda messed up man and let it go. I show up to the job and it's murder. These forms weighed 100 pounds each and you had to walk up a loose dirt incline with them. Then you had to throw them on a lumber yard style flatbed, so the more forms you stacked the harder it got. The boss was 65 years old, but had what we call old man strength plus his Neanderthal DNA. He was right in the trenches with us carrying forms up, but he did it nonchalantly two at a time with a lead cigar in his mouth. Towards the end of the day, I could tell I was doing permanent damage to my body. I had one knee failing and couldn't push the 100 pound forms up as the top of the stack was now 8 feet off the ground. I took my cash at the end of the day and never went back. Those were some tough motherfakers and the money just wasn't worth it to go back the next day. First summer out of school, I signed up with a temp agency to get some money quick. Wound up getting a hardscape laborer gig. Basically we landscaping houses. The first week it was great, I was outside and moving regularly, a few growing pains getting to learn everything but that's how it goes being new. Week 2, suddenly the guy that owned the company was the meanest boomer jackass I have ever met 58 going on 80 with a barrier rod wedged up his ass. Not an hour passed that he didn't make me feel like I was doing enough, wrenching up fabric tarp or cutting out the clay deposits so we could set stone block. Sweat pouring off my face like the key and peel sketch his son was another story altogether. Top 3 most likable people I've ever worked with, MO's definition L, but Jesus was his dad ever the opposite. Maybe I'm being too harsh in retrospect, but goddamn the Grinch would tell the old man to lighten up. Anyway, we're laying rock down, and I'm hauling quarter ton loads of granite, in a crumbling wheelbarrow, up and down this steep hill, doing my damn best to not lose control of the wheelbarrow or dip the nose itch into the grade and fly over the handles and get a face full of rough granite. This goes on for about 12 minutes, we are down to the last load when I head back up, but I step wrong on the hill and twist my ankle and fall over. Now, when we laid rock, it got as complicated as opening a grain hatch at the end of a dump truck. As the rock whittled down, I or old grouch or his son or the other guy working with us would pull a lever to lift the bed up so gravity could pull the load down against the gate and through the grain hatch. With the last load, we undo the clasps holding the gate in place, so the last ton of rock pushes the gate out and falls into the wheelbarrows. The rocks that inevitably end up on the ground, we just shovel up and pile into a barrow with room to spare, so aim laid over on the ground for a few seconds before I get to my feet again and run the rest of the way up the hill, arriving too late for the rock dump and a good third of a ton of granite rock ends up on the street. The old man gets angry and yanks the barrow from me, barks something I don't catch, and throws the thing on the ground, and is about to shove a flat pan shovel into my hands, but gets a face full on the gaudy neon green uniform shirt he dumped on me when I started. He's thrashing at his head trying to take the shirt off, I spit on the ground, and stormed off to my car. Petty? Yeah, more than a little. I found another job the same day, a lawn care and maintenance position that I'm much happier with. My homeboy got me a gig at a topless bar he was managing when I had to move back home. The owner liked what I was doing and decided to transfer me to another topless bar she owned. So I said fuck it and went with it as I needed the money. I was there for about a month before the incident happened. The bar itself was crazy slow, and sometimes we would have maybe two or three dancers for a few hours. Now I was trained to make sure customers are happy, so if all the customers have dancers in their laps, or they're drinking with their buddies and the dancers, don't trip, at my old club we could never have an empty stage, but we had waitresses who would go and dance on stage to give the actual dancers breaks which this club didn't have. What I would do, so I wouldn't tire out the dancers was put one on for about 3 to 4 songs, then chill for about 10 over 15 minutes, and put the next dancer up, rinse and repeat. This made the dancers happy as they weren't getting worked to death, and it kept the customers buying drinks for themselves and the dancers, in California at least, the money is made at the bar, and not so much on the dancers sold, as opposed to a fully nude club where all the money is from dancers and a small amount from non-alcoholic drinks. 
So on the night it happened, I had 4 dancers and 3 customers, it had been slow for the past 3 hours. I was doing what I normally do, when the owner came in and got pissed. She started yelling at me, and telling me to keep, putting the dancers up on rotation, and don't let the stage be empty for longer than a minute or two. I tried to explain my reasoning for doing what I'm doing, and asked if she could call in some more dancers as I was still new to the club, and didn't have anyone's numbers. She just kept yelling at me, so I angrily complied. Another homeboy texted me, and told me he had good news, I was being offered a DJ gig at a fully nude club in downtown LA, owned by the same people who I've previously worked for, it is a club, that is a chain and I've worked at two of the clubs they own, and helped at another two. This was all I needed. I called off the dancer, walked to the manager's office where the manager on duty and owner were at, and told them to cover the DJ booth, and call in the next DJ early cause I quit. I told them to have my pay ready in 3 business days and left. Of course after I gave the owner an earful as I have managed, and clubs and my homeboy who got me the job told her about how well I know the industry and everything good he knows about me, he and I worked as bouncers together, and his wife and I worked together at the first club I ever worked at, so he knew I know how to make things happen, and how to keep customers and dancers happy, which left her with her bottom jaw. In the floor and the manager, I felt bad for him, scrambling to get another DJ in a sap. I also made sure to get my tips from the dancers and bartenders, before I left as they were mad about what was happening, and how the owner acted as well. I went back for my last check and the manager said the owner was only going to give me a fraction of what I was owed. I explained that through different contracts I had from the industry who have managed her clubs before, that I wouldn't take the money today, but I would be back the next night, and if all my money wasn't there, I would make sure they were shut down. Shady business owner and dealings. When I came back, there was my full pay ready for me along with an extra bonus, to keep me quiet good times. Worked at a job as a packer slash trimmer for meats, that then were delivered to high-end restaurants. This company started about 1-2 to two months, before I started working there, so I was there since the beginning. Got moved to the warehouse about 6 months in, since they needed the help. About one year in I started doing work that was in no way represented with my pay but oh well, I kept at it. After three months of working there I got a $1 raise, neat. After one year I was given another raise of $1, everyone else got two. When I asked why, the manager told me I was a bit lazy at times, and when trash was on the floor I would walk by and not pick it up. Warehouse was always understaffed, we would have trucks come in making deliveries mon. Fur that I would have to unload and place in the warehouse slash coolers that was in no way big enough to hold even half the product we would bring in. On top of doing all that, I would have to pick orders and make a route ready for the three drivers that would come in the morning to make deliveries. On top of that I would have to make my own route and deliver the product as well myself. And by the time I got back, everyone would leave and it would just be my brother, office job who got overworked as well. And I, when should I pick up trash off the floor? I would work 12 hour days, every day and come in on Saturdays as well. When it was my turn to make deliveries, my supervisor would always get mad about my art. I've always voiced that I never wanted to work this much. It was horrible. Lifting 80 to 100 pounds cases every day nearly every minute. As far as me taking the product out for deliveries, the supervisor would not like to ask the drivers to go out on a third route, so he would make me go. At this moment in time I have broken down two to three times at the job. At times, my supervisor and manager seemed supportive and understanding, even got a phone call from the CEO saying he appreciates how much I care for this company. I've told my supervisor that we needed more help and he never did anything about it, just saying we are in this together. Finally I decided to ask for a raise directly from the CEO, and he was shocked by how little I was making. Right, he thought about it for a few days. It'll get back to this shortly, later on in the week or couple weeks, we were really busy, as usual, it was Friday, our busiest day of the week, I clocked in at 7am. Pulled orders, made room in the cooler slash freezer for future pallets, made sure drivers got out on time, and also had my route ready to go for when I needed to leave, anywhere from 11am to 1pm. There was this one order that no one liked taking, 
because it was a 20 minutes walk total from doctor restaurant and back to dock, of course, yours truly was left with it. The salesman called me multiple times when I would deliver this order, which was no more than 5 cases, I told him that my supervisor said to leave it for later, so he said okay, called me multiple times again, and told him I was still making deliveries, so it would be my last stop. Finally, it was 8pm, when I would finally go to deliver this order, me and my brother went together, everyone else leaves at 2pm or 5pm, so we were the only ones left, he called me asking if it's been delivered, and I told him we are going now, he was angry, screaming at me saying, why the fuck am I taking so long, I mentioned to him that I have not even taken my lunch and it's only me and my brother left here doing everything. He didn't care and said not to talk to him like this and he'll see me when we see each other Monday. He was a salesman slash self-appointed VP before he eventually got fired. After making the delivery, me and my brother finally took our 30 minute lunch around 9pm. Every Friday someone has to pull orders for them to go out Saturday morning. It was my job to do this every Friday, alone, after making deliveries. Nearly every Friday, my brother who works in the office would help me because it was his job to lock up and set the alarm. We finished pulling, scanning, and invoicing all the orders at 3.30am, a faking 20 and a half hour shift, that paycheck I made around $1,800 after taxes on a $13 pay wage. Got home, slept till 11.30am only to wake up to a text message saying the CEO called us at 8am asking if we can come in to clean the place up. I thought it was a cruel joke, yet I knew it wasn't. I was so sad and miserable lol. We ended up going in together, he paid us $200 each, cash. He wasn't aware we stayed, so late until we brought it up. Later that week, Friday, he said he thought about my raise, and made me night supervisor, and paid me a whole $15 an hour. I lasted about 2 years until 2017, when I told my manager I was putting in my 2 week notice, he was surprised. Later, my supervisor told the CEO, and I shot the CEO an email the next morning, to let him know about it, he said in an email me being shocked is an understatement. He called me the day after as well, when I was driving home, why I was leaving, he thought it was for another job, but I was just miserable, I told him a reason, not the whole truth, he wasn't sold on it so came by the same night at 10pm, when my shift started, and we spoke for an hour. I told him everything that was wrong and just how bad last year and the current year was for me in this job. It was all on me, only one working so late. He convinced me to stay and put me on salary, said it would get better. It took another 2 years for it to get better lol, but even then, after that night we spoke, mentally I was clocked out for 2 years or so. My supervisor was let go during that time frame because he had enough as well. I then became middle management with another friend of mine. He eventually got let go and I became warehouse operations manager. Got paid good, especially for being 25 over 26. Things were still bad, but not like before. I was finally able to hire people myself, but never enough to be suitable for the job. Only just enough to get by when everyone was here. His reason being, he didn't want to be overstaffed, okay. My hours stayed relatively the same, I would still work 14 hours every other day or so, but my pay was higher, still, I was burnt out. Finally, COVID happened. Mass layoffs. Things got even worse, short staffed, crazier hours and I was fried, as well as my people. Then came December 31st of 2020, the day I got laid off lol. He told me I seemed different, not as determined as before and tired. I told him we have been very busy, and just yesterday I got off at 830pm, which, I entered at 6am. He said the numbers don't show, that we are busy blah blah blah. At this point, for a few months I was already ready to leave this job, still I gave it my all, until the last month or so, I would leave around 430pm or 5, didn't matter what I did or didn't do, it'll do it the next day. I was tired of staying till 7. Said he would call me back in March of 2021, which I didn't believe either way. No call, still, I would not go back either way. I went through depression. Gained weight and my health was completely shot because of that job and would not go through that again. TLDR.
worked at company since beginning. 2014 worked 14 hours every other day, and one Friday worked nearly 21 hours in a day with bro. Friday 7 a.m. till sat 330 am, only to be called back in Saturday morning. Had enough, put my two weeks notice in 2017. CEO convinced me to stay, only to be laid off December 31st of 2020 by said CEO. P.S. Type this up in a reply for someone else's reply then decided to copy and paste for main thread and now my paragraphs are gone lol. A couple months ago, I had joined a mobile clinic situated in a rough area. I was introduced to the staff working there. I had spoke to the nurse working there. We talked for hours about life, his pet chameleon, and his lengthy experience working in the field. As a black person, and being used to microaggressions all my life, I noticed a bit of some red flags. A patient came in with his mother. The nurse said something about the two boys should have a parent in the room in our mobile clinic. He was not aware that he was talking to the mom of the patient. The mother looked feminine to me, and it was clear that she was the parent of the child. I felt so bad for her. She clearly looked upset, but was holding it in. I admire her patience. When I mentioned that I was vegetarian, he turned to me and looked shocked. I've never seen someone's head turn that quickly. For some odd reason, he was absolutely incredulous, lol. He kept talking about the general health differences between black and white people, because black people are genetically predisposed to all these conditions. He talked about how slaves, brought over by the Atlantic slave trade had their skin tasted to determine its saltiness, and, to him, was why black people have a higher predisposition to high blood pressure, completely disregarding the convoluted nature of social factors and health disparities contributing to these higher rates among black adults here in the US. He also talked about how sensitive our skin is. If anyone knows if skin with more eumelanin is more sensitive, please let me know. V honestly, he kind of gave me eugenics favoring vibes from the way he was constantly talking about these topics with a special emphasis to how black people genetically have it worse compared to other races. Last but definitely not least, he commented on my weight. Fellas, never say anything about a woman's weight to her face. He said I looked about 15 pounds overweight. Yes, I'm curvy and my thighs do touch, but I did I ask you to comment on my weight. Let's just say I never showed up to that place again. As a graduate student, I worked for the College Genomics Institute and had worked in one department under she who must not be named. Her voice like nails on a chalkboard, her face like Medusa's, her attitude like a mean old beach. I assume the only reason her child hadn't murdered her in her sleep is because he's physically handicapped. When she walked into the room my stress level rocketed. Everything anyone did was wrong. Everything she assigned me to do was menial. Yes, even for grad school. I loathed her with every fiber of my being. If she were on fire, the only reason I'd piss on her was to make sure she lived a long life in excruciating pain. How I felt towards her was not a secret. I endured and was rewarded with a transfer to a different department under a rational, sane, and even nice person. One day, a co-worker was speaking to the manager across the room, and I heard my name in their conversation, so I slid my chair over to ask what's up. We had a conversation that went something like this, manager, oh, I'm leaving to take another position somewhere else. Me, who's going to take your place? Him, Satan herself me, I quit him, rather surprised, really, me, yes, really, him, what's your last day, me, my last day is the day before she starts, Kaoka, see, told ya, I joined Goldman Sachs out of a graduate degree, program in the height of the pandemic last year August 2020, I spent so much time studying in school, and maneuvering my way, to get into a company that I didn't particularly realize what the work or actual opportunity may entail. I was the only colored analyst and only female to be hired on the floor. Right off the bat I noticed that I had more sheet on my resume and education than all the other analysts hired. Funny enough I was placed in a team where legit nothing interesting was happening and where I wasn't learning squat. By the time November rolled around one guy from the team was fired and my manager started giving me calls about what have you accomplished. Not sure what he was expecting, but I was barely given any work and no real projects. 
By December I started looking poking around in internal mobility to see if I could move to another team. Realized pretty quickly that most folks I spoke to were on the verge of breaking down at any moment. Given how slow, boring, and meaningless the work was I stopped caring about consequences and did the least possible. I did the math and realized that all in my compensation was one bitcoin. At peak, after tax, I basically asked to be moved to somewhere more interesting. Every appeal was rejected and all opportunities blocked. I ended up doing random sidetrack projects. After interacting with a couple higher ups for one project I noticed how tied down they all were with no options of their own. They were also just employees who could be fired or let go at any moment. One month prior to meeting my one year mark my manager called me in for a talk down. For the one time I spoke up during a assignment he gave me. The entire bloody year was a complete waste of my time. Some friends from grad school hit me up to go to a trip to Vegas. Friends were telling me about some of the work and projects they were doing on the trip. I was the unhappiest one and the one with the sheetiest job. After I returned from my trip I had hit my one year mark. The day after I returned I was given another filler assignment. Without thinking about what would happen I sent in a resignation email. While working at GS for a year I lost half my hair, started having chest pains during work hours, and was coughing up blood at work didn't learn sheet, and no way in hell recommend anyone to do it. There are easier and more interesting ways to make much more money without losing sanity, health, and putting up with nepotism. Quit three weeks ago. I start my new job on September 1st this week. It is in a completely different industry and is offering higher comp, great insurance, five weeks PTO, with option to work from home on some days. As a colored female in my mid-twenties I thought I could rise through the bullshit corporate ladder. Instead I'm thinking I'll gain relevant experience, make contacts, and start my own company. For students out there thinking about what they want to do, I say to the side project you are thinking about. It may be risky, but take those calculated risks. Be meticulous about the choices you make as they will afford you better opportunities in the future. Being first gen with no financial backing I avoided debt like the plague, with good cause. These choices are affording me rare opportunities to pursue and make life whatever I want it to be. Be careful where you lay your domino pieces. Godspeed. I found another job first because I was a college student that couldn't do without a paycheck. But the decision was made on the spot. Worked a job in college at an airport parking lot that was open 24 hours. My normal shift was 6 o'clock to 2.30. Got a call at 1 am that the 10 pm cashier hadn't shown up and could I please come in now? So at 2 am, I stumble into work, starting my shift early. Yay overtime. Then at 2 o'clock, my replacement doesn't show up and I end up covering their shift, working from 2 am to 10 pm, under threat of getting fired if I left the booth and went home. Company rule was that you weren't allowed to leave until somebody showed up to cover your shift. When my paycheck rolls around, not only no overtime, but it's short. Instead of 2 am to 10 pm, it shows I worked 10 am to 2 pm. Okay, fine, type has happened. Boss promises to fix it on the next paycheck, two weeks later. Two weeks later, not fixed. Boss says, I don't remember any of that happening. Folks, the lady called me at home at 1am, I came in at 2am, and then I worked 20 hours straight, and she claims she doesn't remember that happening and gaslights the fuck out of me? What the fuck? I decided to quit right then and there. Note, the company was not experiencing financial difficulties. However, I found out later that she would have gotten in trouble for allowing me to work that long. It wasn't illegal, but it was against company policy. I did not quit on the spot. I quit one week later for a different sheety minimum wage job, but at least a sheety minimum wage job where I was more likely to be paid for the work I did sheety minimum wage jobs are fairly easy to replace. After all, especially if you have a very good reason for leaving the current job. Why are you leaving your current job? They shorted my paycheck after I worked 20 hours straight and only paid me for 4 hours and refused to fix it. I'm afraid they'll do it again and I'd like to work for a company that pays me for the hours I work. Otherwise, I'm not all that fussy, I'm a college kid taking night classes. Hired. 
gave a week's notice, mostly because I couldn't start the new job for a week. During that week, the boss called me in the early am hours twice asking me to cover a shift. I lmao and said no, and I was pointedly late the second time because I slept in, because somebody woke me up at 1am and I knew she was manning the booth, so it wasn't like I was inconveniencing another cashier by being late. Reported the wage issue to the board of labor and sent a copy of the letter via fax to the company HQ. Got a check via overnight FedEx from the company HQ 4 days later, an apology and a request to come back to work. I declined. Then, my replacement disappeared with a day's worth of cash 3 months after I left and was missing for 6 days, it was all over the news. They believed he'd been kidnapped. Then he showed back up with most of the cash intact, apologized, and said temptation was too much, but he felt horrible about stealing the money. Quite a few years later, I'm flying out of town and park my car at the lot. My old boss was still there, cashiering in the booth, and she asked if I wanted my job back. I politely declined, had a far far better job, then conversationally asked her if she'd ever fix the problem with the time clock. Nothing super major, but I worked for Target in my early college years as a part time job. I'm a big dude, so I worked the warehouse job and got along pretty well with everyone, except this brown noser in the warehouse, named Grant and Grant hated me, because I was always a straightforward no bullshitter guy who didn't engage in gossip and politics like he did. He used to be stuck to the hip to our team leader Joyce so naturally Joyce took his side on everything, and didn't like me either. One day corporate came by and on this day I was working the floor which was pretty rare. I was helping a customer and the corporate team noticed my customer service skills and offered me a promotion. Grant tried to brown nose the team, but they ignored him and offered me his job, which was like an assistant manager type position. I of course accepted and went home super thrilled. The next day I get called into Joyce's office with her sitting in her big chair with a sheet eating grin. I ask what it's about, and she tells me that multiple customers have complained that I was cursing and yelling obscenities on the floor. Which of course was a flat out lie. I had nothing but a spotless record. She tells me that she will be moving forward with firing me, but I had the option to stay if I gave up the position I was offered. I told her right then and there she could go fuck herself, and that I didn't want to work with a brown nosing piece of sheet weasel like Grant and his cuck holding best friend. I took my vest off, threw it on her desk, and walked out the door. The funny thing is I ran into the general manager, told her the story, and she offered to give me the job, but I knew Joyce Wold made my life hell, so I declined it and moved on. That was the only job I ever walked out of. I was thrilled to get a job as a receptionist at a family, practice slash cosmetic surgery office. The office had hired a cleaning crew for the bulk of the cleaning, but, since I was the new girl, they gleefully instructed me to empty trash cans, vacuum the waiting room, wipe down surfaces, etc. I was taking out the trash from the exam rooms, when I felt a quick jab, thought oh fuck, and looked down. Yep, a hypodermic needle was sticking out through the garbage bag. I have a manageable phobia of needles, and I'm a bit of a hypochondriac. So I immediately began to feel lithelated and staggered back to the office, garbage bag and all. When I told them the story and showed them the proof the doctor and office manager looked horrified. They told me that they would pay for me to go to the emergency room, first day on the J-O-B equals N-O company health insurance for another 89 days, but only if I signed a liability waiver. I refused to sign anything and went to the emergency room anyway, only to be turned away because they said it was way too soon to test for bloodborne diseases. I'd like to say I quit that day, but I really needed the money, so I stayed, even though the doctor treated me like sheet the retire time. I didn't quit until I found a piece of metal in my food for the second time in roughly a month. The first was a small spring. I left on the spot before the job could kill me lol. Dunkin Donuts in college. Hired for 8.15 slash hours. Within a month, made to be alone on shift from 2 to 11 daily which includes cleanup, keys, and setting up the next day's cooking for the graveyard shift 2 months and they throw new hires onto my shift to learn. 
it's right on the border of ghetto and college town and the crunchiest ladies that our morning shift don't even try to clean up, but it was an honest job, and I got to take home a bag of bagels and muffins to my roommates for fast regularly. Dunkin throws all pastries bagels and muffins out daily, so they're just gonna go to waste. End up getting bought out by a Saudi businessman who owns a gas station chain. Dude is such a good boss and literally gets on his hands and knees with me for two days and scrubs the floors, cleans the grout, and has me train him. Spends a week with me and gives me a dollar raise on the spot. A week later his Ducati motorcycle and Jean's nephew comes in to be my manager. Guy never wears the uniform. Barely helps. I stay late one night due to a massive order for some reception in the morning. She gets pissed because she hates me because I was in the way. He calls me at 6am and without even introducing starts screaming at me over the phone and I hang up on him. He keeps calling me for hours. Finds my pay stub, my address and drives his motorcycle onto my front porch apartment and bangs on the door until my roommate, 6 feet 3 lineman kicks the door open in boxes and starts screaming at him and literally picks him up when he tries to shove his way into the apartment. 5 feet 7 or something, and chucks him into the bushes. He burns out his tires at like 630m on our porch. I was staying at a GF's and didn't know. RM gives me a call and tells me about it. I don't work till the next day and block his number. Come in and nonchalantly work my normal shift. Police show up and start accusing me of assault. Ask them to describe the issue and ask if I look like a 6 foot up lumberjack. I do not. The lumberjack is a jab at white people. He was a putz, they drop it, and talk to my RM who describes what happens. My voicemails and call logs help convince them. He gets there about 2 hours into my shift and immediately starts yelling at me. I'm the only one working. I throw my apron onto the counter and walk out. Call Loma the owner and just leave it on speaker. He tries to hire me back about two weeks later, after firing his nephew for a $5 raise, but it already started a job. Oh boy. I worked at a fast food restaurant for a little under a year. It was like 8 months. A franchise. So corporate really wasn't a thing. I had 3 paychecks of this bounce over the course of 6 weeks. No matter where I went, or who I talked to, they simply couldn't get them to pay out. I was young and stupid, and was terrified of what the people in town would think, so I decided to listen to the manager that told me to oh, just give it a day or two, and I kept my head down, worked as hard as I could, and didn't really comment much on the matter. And, as embarrassing as it is to admit, my mom was furious when she found out how long it had been going on for, and she stood up for me. She went full on grizzly bear mode. She stormed into the restaurant and demanded to talk to a manager, knowing full well that I wasn't going to stand up for myself. You see, I wasn't particularly loud and was shy af. Because abuse and bullying are things you never really recover from, who knew? Then, the manager threatened her and threatened to make my life a living hell for as long as I worked there they have video, so I have no clue what was going through his head at the time. I turned in my uniform and quit the same day, and she went out and got a restraining order against him slash called an attorney to file charges and take the restaurant to court. It quickly became a class action, because apparently people like to be paid in a timely manner. The owner's in jail for fraud now, and the manager is in jail for starting a fight with another employee that came to blows. Fun time all around. Worked as a bar back in a small family owned restaurant and marina for 2 years. Was great at my job and made great money in cash tips at a young age. The owners were a force to be reckoned with. They were brother and sister. The brother was a complete creep that perved on the new waitresses any chance he got. The sister a complete control and clean freak. You could bust your ass for 8 hours straight and sit down for 30 seconds. And if she saw you, it was an immediate berating session. I swallowed my pride and put up with a lot of bullshit there. Tons of nepotism and they got away with a lot of shit due to being family owned and one location. Anyways the day I quit was an off day. 
I had just got into a car accident three days prior, a Thursday, and I had a shift on Saturday that I called out of due to being sick. I said stomach virus, but it was really hungover. Anyways the next day on Sunday I got a call from the sister owner, and she said I was seen walking around town Friday night, and that I needed to come into work by 2pm or else. Now granted I did take a walk late Friday night with a friend to get some drinks from a gas station. But that wouldn't matter as I called out for having a virus and I cold very easily been fine that night, but sick in the morning. That's how stomach viruses work. So I call back and say my piece. She says and I quote, if you can't come and I'll need to hear from your parents or you're fired I was 20 at the time. I did live with my parents, but had my own bills. Paid my own taxes all of the that. That was it. I quit right there over the phone. I was done swallowing my pride and putting up with petty high school he said she said bullshit. We had this system where any warranty we attached to a sale got us one entry to a raffle that gave the winner a U dollar sign 500 worth of groceries. I played ball and I did well for the company. There was a meeting called on the night of my birthday with a day or two notice. I had plans, it being my birthday, and it was outside of regular work hours, so I explained to the managers why I wouldn't be there. On the way to dinner I got a snapchat from a workmate telling me I should have been there. Didn't think much of it, but later in the night it came out that I had won the raffle, but because I had made plans before they decided to have the meeting in the draw, they redrew the raffle and gave it to someone else. The very next day, I walked to the managers told them that I didn't even want the money, but there was no way I'd continue my employment with them. A manager I respected talked me into staying till mid-January, but in hindsight I really wish I left as soon as I could as it would have screwed them over a bit over the Christmas period. But I got the last laugh anyway, as we sales guys all had swipe cards. Generally managers needed to swipe their cards for sales when prices were too low. Over Christmas, all sales guys had this function as they wanted us to get any sale we could. They deactivated all the sales guys override functionality just after Christmas, but not mine, because I guess they knew I was leaving so why bother? My final day, I gave out some very very good deals to customers. Was working for a UK firm, who were based in France, at their Dutch client. Lots of travel, 100 flights a year, although not as well paid as you might expect. About 5 years in I had a long distance girlfriend in Peru, thanks to all the air miles I built up. Asked the co-founder for a 3 month sabbatical, that is unpaid leave. He said he had no problem with it in principle, but he'd have to discuss it with the other co-founder. The following Monday morning they were both at the airport, which was unusual. Talked to me about their long standing plans to enter the South American market, and how my plans aligned with this. Gave me a talk about how they would open an office in Lima with development and marketing teams, and I would be running it. I should start doing some background research and reports, and make the necessary arrangements to move out there. So, I did. Gave notice on my rented apartment in Eindhoven, and my parents drove over from England via the car ferry, to help me move my stuff back to this. Had to bin the stuff that I couldn't fit into my dad's car, including an Indian sitar that I bought from a music store in Goa, donated it to a guy who worked at the dump. My girlfriend lined up an apartment in Lima for me to rent for the first couple of months, and I put down a deposit. The office was just going to be a regus one, so I was told that I needn't worry about that. But I had to keep pestering my boss about the flight to Lima. He'd said the company were going to pay, but remained silent when I emailed him different options. I needed these details for my visa application. And he stopped coming with me to the client in Holland. Eventually, about a week before the date they'd given me for opening the Slimmer office, he turned up at the client and asked if I'd come for a meal with him that evening. Over the course of an hour or two, he revealed that the other co-founder had never had any intention of opening an office, and he thought that I'd lose interest in the idea if they gave me a couple of months. Furthermore, he didn't even believe that I had a Peruvian girlfriend in the first place. And no, I couldn't even have the sabbatical that I'd originally asked for. They needed me at the client. So, I quit on the spot. Took my sabbatical in Peru anyway, had an amazing time, proposed to my girlfriend, and lined up a job in England paying pounds 10k more for my return. 
heard on the grapevine months later that they were still pushing the narrative that my girlfriend didn't exist. We've been married for 13 years now, with kids. Was pleased to hear the company had lost their cash cow client in Holland too, a year or so after I left. I was working at my university's bookstore. My manager was very emotionally volatile. When she was in a bad mood anything could trigger her into going off on someone. She went off on my coworker for dropping a stapler and the girl was so upset at being raged at that she ran out in tears, still wearing her work apron, and never came back. It was a pretty toxic situation when this woman was in a mood. I had spent the end of one shift repairing a few rubber stamps we used to stamp the edges of books. When I came in the next day, everything was super quiet, everyone had their heads down and acting busy. That meant the manager was in a mood. You could sense the tension. I went to clock in and get my apron and the employee who did the accounting looked up at me from her desk then immediately broke eye contact sheet. No sooner had I got to my little workstation where I'd been inventorying new books when the manager came flying down the steps from her little elevated office with a window that looked out over the store. She was red in the face, nostrils flaring, and eyes bulging. She proceeded to scream at me for 5 minutes for not putting the cap on the super glue properly and gluing together a handful of random office supplies, paper clips, short pencils, rubber bands, and erasers in one of our little random office supply boxes we kept at our workstations. She also accused me of doing it on purpose, just to mess with her head, because she knew all along that I had it in for her. So not only did I get scolded like a bad child, she did it in front of coworkers, customers, classmates, and a professor. I had it, just faking had it. It wasn't my only job, I really only kept part time hours there for the textbook discount, so I didn't need the job to get by. I walked back to the time clock, hung my apron on the peg, clocked out and said I'm not dealing with this anymore, I quit and walked the fuck out. The assistant manager, who was an absolute angel, called me that night to ask me to come back. But I just couldn't. It was too much. Not long after that, the manager managed to seriously insult a student whose family were apparently VIPs, and she got transferred to another campus. I went back to work there again part time, because the new manager was a really good guy. That's the only job I've ever put on the spot. This'll get buried but a, fuck it. Worked at Taco Bell for one day, when I was 16. I work as a healthcare professional now during a pandemic, and it isn't quite as bad as that. Never worked a fast food job before. On my first day, I was expected to be shown once how to prep everything for the morning, and then do it myself for lunch and dinner. These are usually 3 or 4 step processes, but there are like 20 of them. I slowed everything down and pissed everyone off, but fine, whatever. There were these vats of boiling water that you'd put the frozen meat into thaw. You'd put them in these cage things and submerge them in the hot water, then you'd pull the whole thing out by the handle at the top, except the cages would break open frequently and the bag of food would just sink to the bottom of the 2 foot deep vat. So what do you do? Easy. You take your 12 inch tongs and fish it out. Except 2 minus 1 is 1, and that means a foot of your arm has to enter a hot water vat to fish out thawed meat. All of the cages broke open on me. All of them. Then you put the sheet under the hot lamps. Except now you've burnt your arms, both. One arm got too painful, and you are a burning them every time you put your arm under the lamps. Which was probably a dozen times, to get the all the food under them. And on top of that, did anyone tell me, the 16 year old who has on his application that it he'd never worked a fast food job, that you need non-slip shoes in the kitchen? Nope. Did the very theatrical slip with the dish full of water and fling the water everywhere seen. All of that was on my first day. Turned in my uniform the next morning. Was driving for a local carrier driving bulk super B hopper bottom loads. Professional driver are required to do safety inspections of their equipment, to verify all lights work, brakes work and are set correctly, tires aren't wearing improperly, etc. Was on my way for a delivery fully loaded, approximately £120,000, and part way through my trip, about 60 to 70 km slash HR the steering wheel started shaking violently, slowed down, went away. Once I got past the 70 mark it would stop as well. 
got to the next town with a good tire shop and stopped there for them to inform me that the passenger side steer tire was shot and needed to be replaced. Called my safety officer and the conversation went something like this, me, hey I'm at place, and they said they need to replace his steer tire, so I'm just going to get that done and be on my way. So, the fact you are. Steers are expensive. Put the sales guy on the phone. Wasn't just a sales guy but their manager. I didn't hear this part, but heard the manager side explaining that he can't let the truck leave like that. It's unlawful as it's already been inspected and deemed unsafe. Eventually heard that they'll start work on it. Gives the phone back to me. So, I want that tire back. Strap it to the back of the truck and bring it back here. Me, I run a super b-hopper bottom, but I'll try to figure something out. Got it strapped down and headed out with a brand new steer and everything was gravy. Friday was back to the shop and I get weekends off so parked the truck and headed home. Monday morning I arrived to my truck and started my pre-trip inspections and noticed something suspicious. The new steer tire wasn't on the truck. Checked the tire more closely and they installed the same tire again that was deemed unsafe and unfit for travel. Immediately walked into my sew office. Me, why is the same tire on my truck and where is the new steer? So, we took it off and took it back for a refund. They're expensive. We turned the steer around and balanced it, should be much better. Me, you know that steers only rotate in one direction, right? You can't mount them backwards. Also, is my life. Not worth it that you had to put that piece of sheet back on. So, just get in your truck and drive, that's what we pay you for. Me, yeah we are done here. I'm packing up and leaving and packed my truck and dipped. That place was a dumpster fire of safety problems and they just kept trying to push their luck. So it was warmer, and hear me out not all of it was bad. I was a closer and backup cape decorator for the bakery and I loved my job. But the fresh department manager, my boss's boss, didn't like me. Why? Because one day she went to decorate 24 cupcakes. Now all fresh department managers must know how to do basic decorating skills. She did not have a clue as to what she was doing. She made a giant mess, spilled icing everywhere then took the airbrush tool we had and basically abused the cupcakes, the countertop and the floor. Then she put it on the sales floor and left me to clean her disaster up, which I did. A week went by and obviously no customer wanted the abomination she had created, so we had to eventually pull it off the sales floor and throw it away. But we all knew, if she found out, that we'd be stuck dealing with her crazy. Sadly I pulled the short straw and was stuck doing my job when she showed up. She found the cupcakes in the trash, still in the container, and pulled them out then yelled at me for doing my job. After that she had it out for me. She would constantly make a mess after I cleaned the bakery and would then yell at me for spending overtime wreck cleaning the area. She was awful. One day she decided to force me into the deli. Now I had no training in the deli and I didn't know what to do with the slices. They're scary as hell because you can easily slice through skin. She got mad at me for not being trained to do someone else's job. Then she told me that not only would I be closing the deli I would also be closing the bakery all by myself. Again I had no deli training and she was purposely setting me up to be fired. I got fed up with her yelling and marched over to the computer, clocked out, stepped out of the deli and bakery and removed my hairnet, name tag and vest all, while she was screaming that I was fired and that she was going to call the police on me. Three months later I found out that she never had the authority to fire me or do what she did but no one would have backed me up anyways because of fear of losing their jobs. Had I found out sooner I would have taken it to corporate. That was my one bad experience at Walmart. Not work, but I quit my college football team after my father, who has been very ill with several heart issues for 20 plus years, had a heart attack in front of me two days before training camp started. Naturally I didn't go to camp. Every coach checked in with me to ask how my dad was doing except the head coach, who played phone tag with me and left me a few texts asking when I was coming to camp. Fast forward a few weeks later, my dad recovers and after the point I'm comfortable going back up to school, school was out of state 4 hours away, and I meet with the head coach whose first words to me were, so you want to join the team again. As if I had quit by not showing up. 
He then went on to mention that what I was going through was not that serious since my dad survived. What made this worse for me was that he told us all during a team meeting before a game, during a speech about the importance of family, that if his brother called in the middle of a game saying he needed him, he would leave right then and there, no questions asked. After he said that to me, I was silent for about 15 seconds and said that I would go to the training room to take care of some separate medical paperwork that I had to wrap up. At the time I was also recently diagnosed with a heart condition and needed to get some clearances before I would even be allowed to play. I actually wouldn't even have been able to participate during training camp had I been there, despite being a starting senior. I left his office and never went back to him, training room or the team ever again. I quit a sport I loved and played from the ages of 9 to 21 because of this as whole. He was always a scumbag, but this was the final straw for me. I later found out that during training camp, when I wasn't there, he was talking shit about me and using me as an example of someone who lacked commitment. He coaches in the NFL now by the way. Not quite on the spot, but almost. It was a pub that had started at as a manager about two months prior. It was a Thursday and the Tuesday I had called in sick because I was throwing up, the Wednesday I was off the schedule already, and then I came in Thursday cause I didn't feel terrible anymore. The general manager gave me a verbal warning for calling in sick for one day, said with it coming up to Christmas he couldn't afford to have people being off as he'd have to have someone who had already done six days on cover it and that's not fair. I'm there thinking a, eh, if your schedule can't handle one person sick for one day it's faking stupid, b hire more staff, so you don't have to make the poor fax their work six days a week. See how dare you give me a verbal warning for being sick, that's illegal. I finished out the few hours of my shift and then talked to my partner, when I got home, they suggested I quit, as soon as I got up in the morning. But I had like an easy 5 hour shift the next day not closing or opening and I had stuff I'd have to return if I quit. So I went in and quit on 5 hours notice right before the weekend. Where I was serving as one of the main bartenders for the Saturday and Sunday which are as you can imagine some of the busiest days. 